Hello and welcome back to Pick and Roll with Carter and Cody. We are so excited to be back for our second episode in the series. And it's going to be a good one today, I think. Uh, today's episode, we are breaking down the NCAA Men's Basketball March Madness Tournament Bracket. Uh, we're going to be going through it all, so definitely stick uh, through all the way with us today. But I'm excited. And of course, join with me. It's my co-host of Pick and Roll. He's the Robbie Hummel. It's my Etwan Moore. Maybe even the Trace Jackson Davis to my Race Thompson. It's Carter Sims. How are you doing, Carter? I guess I'm the Robbie Hummel because I've been doing this for six years. I've been playing for six years. That's cool. I'll take it. If I'm going to be a Purdue guy, I will be Robbie Hummel. I do like Robbie Hummel. Yeah. Shout out Robbie Hummel. Good enough. I, I gave myself Race Thompson for you, one of the worst players. So, you know. Oh, can... well, you've, you've also been there for six years, but you're just always injured, also. Not yeah. as historied stats as Robbie Hummel, but happy to be here. Good to be here. Yeah, of course. Happy to have you back. And today, actually, we're, since we're doing a special episode, we figured we'd bring on a special guest as well. You know, if you, you've watched Captain in the past, maybe you've seen him or, you know, he's just a great guy in general. It's Aiden Cotter. How you doing today, man? Pretty good, man. I appreciate you having me on. Glad to bring some uh, mid-major insight into this Power 5 conference podcast. But if I can switch into that uh, that Purdue lineup, I'd like to be like your AJ Hammonds today, you know, just getting <laughs> things down, down low. Not being splashy or anything, but uh, excited to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. That's a good comp, AJ Hammonds. I was thinking for IU, you're you're kind of like a Miller cop sort of guy to me. Nice. <laughs> Which nice. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. You uh, like to pass up open threes to do a pump fake, take one dribble, and shoot the same three. Congrats. Great, great player. Northwestern <laughs> uh, transfer. Um, but yeah, obviously bringing Aiden on too. If you watched our first episode, you know that. You know, I'm a Purdue fan and Carter's an IU fan. Aiden mentioned he's bringing in the mid-major just because he went to Dayton. It was sort of Aiden right off the bat, too. Uh, any just general thoughts on, on Dayton season? Or? Um, well, if you see, I'm wearing my Dayton 2020 <laughs> National Championship homemade <laughs> custom meat t-shirt. Amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, we'll not get my talk about my flyers much in this podcast. It was a rough season, to say the very least. Uh, we were like the North Carolina mid-majors this year. Ooh. We're top 25 to begin the year. Um, and then just kind of the not performed expectations all year. Yeah. Supposedly maybe getting a coaching change. A lot of question marks. Archie Miller available? Is he? Oh, people have been talking about it. Oh, no. You don't want, no. Get rid of him. No. Stick him I, with I, I don't want Archie back. I don't want Archie back. back. Nah, it's time I, for a new era. I wouldn't hate that, honestly. I mean, he was terrible this year, but he was good for them for a long time. So give him a chance. But yeah. Anywho, I say we roll straight into the episode and we're going to break down a couple things. First, I'll just talk about, you know, did they kind of get the bracket right and then go through and break down each regional specifically to that standpoint as well. But yeah. I just say in general, let's start off with, did the committee get the selections right? Are you stupid or something? Carter, obviously we were talking uh, last week about who we thought was going to be in the first four, who was going to be out. We were definitely right on some of it, but we were definitely wrong on a lot of it too. But in general, I guess, do you think they got it right? For the most part? Yeah. Um, I think just the one outlier that, at least all of Twitter has been talking about for the past two or three days has been Rutgers. Um, and obviously you and I watched a lot of Rutgers basketball this year, Cody, they beat up on our teams respectively, yeah. Indiana and Purdue. And I am quite shocked to not see them here. I guess I get the case. Cause I, I was listening to um, the selections committee, uh, Chris Reynolds, who headed up the selections committee this year, talk about it. Yeah. And they watched them post the injury of Mawat mag. And they watched that and they just weren't the same team. But to that, I say, did they watch, you know, the Michigan game or the Purdue? Like they gave Purdue a game in the Big Ten tournament. But obviously, you know, you lost a lot of games. Honestly, I think if they won at Minnesota, I think they're in the tournament, which is a stinger. Yeah. So other than that, I think they got it right. I'm shocked a little bit to see Nevada there over Rutgers, people like that. Uh, Arizona State also. But for the most part, I think I think it's all right. Happy to see Mississippi State and Pitt in there. Clemson, maybe you could have made the case for, but probably not. Overall, I'm pleased. If I'm a Rutgers fan, I'm upset, obviously. I completely agree. I think it does just boil down. They had three quad three losses, I guess. You can look at that. Yeah. Yeah. If you go like to the advanced statistics, like Malat Mag, when he was on the floor, they were a much better team offensively. But I mean, that makes sense. He was their starting shooting guard. Um, so mm -hmm. losing him... Like, that makes sense. They would lose a little bit of efficiency in that sense. I think Nevada being the tournament is, is an atrocity. You know, I was, <laughs> I was already dissing on the Mountain West in last episode. I mean, they have really no good wins. I think possibly, you know, they have some good Mountain West stuff. 
beat San Diego State, beat Utah State. But I mean, recently, I feel like in this case too, it, like the committee was like, okay, what have you done recently? Rutgers hasn't, yeah. they just lost to Minnesota. You know, they lost to Purdue in the Big Ten tournament, which was a good game. They just have our number in general. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't win that. Yeah. I thought Rutgers 100% should be in. I thought Oklahoma State could have made a case as well. Arizona State is a tricky one. I think literally they only got in the tournament because of that full court buzzer beater against <laughs> Arizona. Arizona on senior night which is a really good win but it's all just like your season came down to one 70 foot shot which is kind of crazy to think about yeah um, Carolina being in front of Clemson too and like their first oh game yeah it's just a uh, it was atrocious yeah Aiden what, what do you think in general do you think like what, what do you think about Rutgers I guess in that sense too if there's anything I took away from how they selected their teams this year I feel like they put a really big emphasis on non-conference games Rutgers yeah. did not play a super tough non-conference. They were like 121 in non-conference strength of schedule. And even like Nevada had a tougher non-conference slate. They had four quad one wins. I felt like Nevada was kind of more in than I think you did, Cody, just according to their metrics. Mm -hmm. It is just super interesting. Like they put this huge emphasis on the net and how important the net is. Like that's all they talk about now. But then you have teams like Pitt and Arizona State, both outside the top 60 in net, whereas Rutgers was 40th. And if they're that close, if the margins are that thin, it's interesting that they're, the metric that they've been promoting so much has just not really seemed to matter. But in general, I think you're right. Like Oklahoma State, tough to play in the Big 12. Somebody has to lose those games, right? They're all pretty solid teams. In general, I don't think I have any major complaints. Do feel for the Rutgers fans. I, I agree. I think that Minnesota game was just the nail in the coffin. And to lose that on a buzzer beater in that way too, is just tough in hindsight, I think. To go to Oklahoma State, too, I mean, playing in the Big 12 is, is not easy. And kind of down the stretch, they just couldn't buy a win. I don't know. I mean, if you play that many good teams nightly compared to Nevada, who was losing to Wyoming and, you know, San Diego State. I'm not San Diego State. San Jose State, excuse me. Much worse team, you know, in the later part of the year. I think it's kind of hard to compare those unless you do use net. But it seems like they used it for some and not for others. So I don't know. It, it's a mess. But I, I definitely don't think Nevada should have been in. <laughs> But that's my, well, my now that matter, so now that Nevada's in, I think the stat is like Steve Alford has coached like five NCA teams that have gone to the NCA tournament, which is a record, and they've done absolutely nothing in the tournament. All those teams. So, congrats to another early uh, exit, I would say, to Steve Alford. Go yeah. Hoosiers! This year's chance, though. I mean, uh, I feel like historically, a team in the first four does make it to the Sweet Sixteen. Usually, so they have one. a chance. They have a chance. But anyways, kind of moving past that and looking at the number one seeds too, I thought there was kind of a weird discrepancy between Bama being the number one overall and then Houston and Kansas in that order being seeded, especially looking at the net and quad one wins, which again was something it seemed like they emphasized. I mean, Kansas has like 15 quad one wins and Houston has, I believe, less than uh, six or seven. So it, it's kind of just interesting how the number one seed went. I also want to throw out the question, do you guys think, Purdue or UCLA should have been the last number one after everything. Well, I know when, when we talked last episode, Cody, we were, we both kind of were leaning towards UCLA to snag that spot from Purdue. And I think really the difference was, uh, at least in my mind, UCLA lost their conference championship and Purdue won theirs. Let's be honest. I mean, Purdue had a really easy road to the championship <laughs> game again. Yeah. So did Indiana, but we squandered <laughs> it. So I'll just put that over here. Mm -hmm. But if Purdue loses any of those games, like then I think we're talking about UCLA there if they beat Arizona in the championship game. So I get that. So I get why Purdue is here also. And I, I would be remiss if the selection committee was like, oh, let's put the unanimous All-American not at the one seed. That makes sense also. In terms of the Kansas-Houston thing, mm -hmm. I think there they just straight up looked at, oh, Houston has like 30 wins and Kansas doesn't, let's just put them there instead. And maybe, I don't know, there's a there's now a narrative that, you know, Bill Self didn't coach the Big 12 in the Big 12 championship because he went to the hospital. Now he's back. And maybe they're just trying to make an easy-ish path for Houston to get to Houston for that fun narrative. But they got to go through the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll get there later. <laughs> but um, the one seeds, for the most part, uh, came out in the wash. And the UCLA, they, they should be happy with their, their draw as well. I agree. And I think it is interesting looking at the Big Ten tournament. I mean, Purdue, the, the highest seeded team that they played was Rutgers in their first game. So it is kind of weird. I don't know if they necessarily deserve that one just based off of winning that tournament. Just because, I mean, Penn State, yeah, they, they're red hot, to be fair. That's a good team, I think. But, I mean, Ohio State is not very good. 
Rutgers isn't good enough to make the tournament, evidently. So that shouldn't like put a too much of a quality win in in the committee's eyes. I don't think. Hmm. I think the, the the thing that really did hurt UCLA, UCLA excuse me, was Jalen Clark getting hurt. Um, yeah. I mean, they lost a zona on on a last second shot by Courtney Ramey, uh, which I feel like is typical of, of the uh, you know Pac-12 championship, just ending a lot of drama. Honestly, I, I probably still would have stuck UCLA in if Purdue would have beaten IU in the Big Ten championship. I think they definitely deserve that number one seed, but it doesn't matter now. I mean, as a Boilermaker fan, you know, it, you love it. it. It's all about the draw. I mean, UCLA got a much tougher region, I think, than Purdue as well. So it kind of all worked out. But yeah. Aiden, any thoughts on just like the higher seeded teams? Yeah, I think they got it right. I, I feel like taking into account Jalen Clark's injury and then like, obviously they had a chance to beat Arizona, like, what essentially was a coin flip, but them losing there and then Purdue taking care of business. Like you can't control who you draw and you took care of everyone in the Big Ten tournament. I think there could have been a lot more drama going into the weekend. Kansas and Houston is interesting. I think Kansas losing the way they did to Texas, just kind of not a super competitive game down the stretch, might have played a role in that. Could have flipped those teams either way. But at the end of the day, I think the committee did a pretty good job here. And I even heard arguments for Texas being a one seed as well. I mean, blowing out Kansas by 20 in the Big 12 championship is no small feat, I don't think. And obviously, they have a, a crap ton of quad one wins as well. But yeah, that's just how they sorted out. But we move on. Um, I think we get straight into the thick of it, boys. Uh, we're going to go region by region. Uh, we have a bunch of different games and categories we will go through. We'll introduce those as we go along. But I said we start at the top. Let's get ready to rumble! Start with the South region in the number one over seed Alabama. In general, just to talk about this region, I think this this region is about as open up as, as any of them. Um, obviously, Alabama being the number one overall seed, they got to be the favorites in a lot of people's eyes. But a little bit of controversy if Brandon Miller ends up not playing some of these games, which is possible, but very unlikely. I think there's a lot of sleeper teams in here. But I say we jump straight into the best first-round matchups, which is where we're going to start every region. And in every region, we're going to start talking about the 8-9 games first. And this one's a doozy. It's one of my favorites. West Virginia and Maryland. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, Aiden, I say we, we kick it off with you, bud. What do you think about this game? I, When I looked at the bracket and saw this game, it was one of those things where I felt like West Virginia could have been seeded even higher. And then you see the only the 19 wins and the 14 losses next to their name. It's like West Virginia is one of those teams where West Virginia is really good, but West Virginia also has 14 losses. With Bob Huggins, definitely you have that tournament experience. Obviously not a ton of success in the last five or six years, but still I do like West Virginia here. I like how experienced they are. Like their top like seven players are all seniors. They have a A-10 transfer, Trey Mitchell from UMass was just a stud back in the day. And, you know, now he's okay on West Virginia. But Maryland, I've decided this like in January and I can't change my mind on it. Maryland, every time I watch them play, it was like, if they're at home, they're great. And if they're anywhere else, I'm just like, I'm going to bet against them. So I do like West Virginia here. I mean, you guys are the Big Ten guys. Um, probably can give a little more insight into Maryland specifically. We, t- I mean, we talked about this in the last episode, Cody, and you just alluded to it, Aiden. Maryland, great at home. One of the best teams in the country at home. Dog water on the road. And now I know this is a new a quote neutral court game, but you know it's in Bur- it's in Birmingham. I bet there's going to be a lot of West Virginia fans there more so than the Maryland fans. Those those elite Maryland snobs aren't going to go to Birmingham, Alabama. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I like West Virginia here as well. I like Bobby Huggins. I like Huggy Bear. I like the experience. Also, Maryland, I think should just be happy. First year coach got him back to the tournament. And Kevin Willard should be pleased. Uh, Jameer Young is the best player on that team. He's exciting to watch. I think it's going to be a really great game, but I do think West Virginia is going to going to slug it out and get through to the next round. I agree with you guys. I, I do think uh, WV will come out on top here. I think it'll be a closer game than people think. So possibly take a little Maryland cover, but I think the line's only like minus one or two anyways. But probably not worth it. Yeah, West Virginia's tough. I think, you know, the Big 12 is grueling, like we talked about. Eric Stevenson is a guy that's not talked about too much. Uh, probably the only white guy on the team, but he's a sniper uh, transfer from South Carolina, actually. And I think one of the most underrated players in, in the Big 12 by far. But Maryland's got some guys. I mean, Jameer Young probably should have been all first team Big 10. I think he just missed out. Uh, but another transfer who who really just impacted this team, uh, you know, to make them entirely different on the defensive and offensive end. 
And, uh, you know, they've had a lot of role players who've been playing a lot better recently, too. Dante Scott's found it. Hakeem Hart, he can, he can shoot it with the best of them. So I don't hate Maryland here. The whole neutral court thing, I think their record is, what, like three and two or something? It was two and one, I think, before the Big Ten tournament, technically. I don't buy it much. I, I'm West Virginia here. If it was at Maryland, I think it is a different story. But unfortunately, you know, in March, you don't play home games most times. Unless Dayton was in the first four, which they're not. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> shots fired. Anyways, let's keep it moving along here. And I say we go straight to the 7-10 matchup, which I think is a really interesting one. I do want to hear you guys' thoughts on it. The Missouri Tigers taking on the Utah State Aggies. Now, Utah State obviously was in our bubble watch, Carter. Yep. And they did win a couple big games down the stretch. Uh, the big one that we were talking about, they ended up defeating Boise State the weekend before the tournament. And then the tournament uh, itself, they beat Boise State again and, and made the championship. So they definitely proved themselves and I think earned that 10 seed. But definitely a fun matchup. What do you think about that game, Carter? Yeah, they definitely are, are getting really good at the right time. They gave San Diego State a game in that Mountain West championship. I do like the magic of the Utah State's coach who coached at UMBC when they beat Virginia as the 16 seed against yeah. the one. So you like that energy for sure. I think this is going to be a really high scoring game. I think Missouri is playing really well, ba really good basketball right now. I'm just giving the slight edge. So I have two brackets, by the way. I have one with IU winning and one that's rational. And, <laughs> nice. and so this is my rational-ish bracket that I'm kind of basing all these off of. Mm -hmm. I'm giving the slight edge to Missouri just because of our collective Mountain West slander that we think they're frauds mostly. The only one I believe, spoiler alert later, is like the only one I kind of believe in is San Diego State here of the bunch. Um, so I'm just giving the edge to to Missouri and the SEC there. I, I think I would agree with you as well. Missouri is kind of one of my sleeper teams, which we'll get to later. Mizzou <laughs> offensively is really good. Utah State defensively is really, really good. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, strength against strength, fire with fire. Which one will come out? You know, normally you would say defense wins championships. I say, hell no. Give me all the offense in the world. If Mizzou gets hot, they can literally beat anybody in this bracket, I think. And they're one of my favorites. They, they made a couple good statement wins, I think, in the SEC tournament. Took out, you know, a lowly Tennessee team and hung enough with Alabama to, to respect them for me. A lot of fun players, fun young coach. Personally, I would take them to win by at least 10 or 12 here. Aiden, what do you think about this matchup? Wow. Um, I, I like Utah State here. I really do. Ooh, I think Nice. I mean, I definitely feel... Like Missouri is that type of team where if they're hitting their threes, they can beat anyone. And they do, right? They're like 11th in offensive efficiency. They're like atop a ton of the metrics on the offensive side of the ball. But like you said, it just, I think it depends on what type of game it comes down to. Like Missouri can push the pace and like get Utah State out of their like set defense. I feel like they definitely have an advantage there. But Utah State's got some good players. They have an absolute sniper, Steven Ashworth, shooting 40 percent from three this year three threes per game and they do have a guy as well along with their coach who was on that umbc team actually played in the upset over virginia so oh. i do kind of i buy into that magic i think it would be a good storyline for the mountain west to beat a big 12 team so therefore you should probably pick missouri but i do like the the utah state magic in this first one i like that a lot i didn't know they had one of the umbc's players as well uh i mean that's magic in the air right there so i love that but yeah i think it is interesting like the, the pace of play is going to be super important. If Mizzou can get up and down and, and chuck threes, I think they have a good chance of winning. It also comes down to Missouri's defense a little bit. If they can get like, I don't know, one or two stops in the first five minutes, I think it might be a runaway, but that likely won't happen. So it should be a good one. So moving on to the last matchup, uh, we're going to do the 6-11, obviously, because it's another good matchup in every bracket. In this one, it's one of my favorites. And um, it really pains me that these two teams are matched up. Because I think against any other six or any other 11, I would probably take uh, either of these teams. But it's going to be the Creighton Blue Chase against the NC State Wolfpack. A couple of really fun teams. I'll throw it over to you, Aiden. I, I know uh, we were talking about this game a little bit earlier, but you have a particular favorite, I, I think, in this one. Yeah, NC State is a team I've kind of honed in on the last couple of weeks just with their guards, right? Turquavion Qua Turquavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner. That kind of backcourt, when I see that in a bracket in March, that is just very, very juicy to me, right? Love having a senior guard along with like a more talented underclassman guard. Obviously not on the same level as like a Kemba Walker, Jeremy Lamb kind of thing, but it gives me a little bit of that same recipe for success. And you look at Creighton, I do like Creighton a lot. Creighton has been kind of like the 
trendy sleeper team for like the last two months just because of how they started they had some injuries but I just I don't know if I see it all the way I feel like I've kind of been waiting to see them like okay this is a top 10 this is a top 12 team in the entire country and they definitely had their moments like you said if they're playing any other 6 or 11 I think I would have either one of these teams advancing but I do kind of like NC State to make, make a little bit of noise right here it's definitely a tough draw I believe Carter, you're you're a Wolfpack fan as well. A little uh, DJ Burns fan, I believe, right? I am a DJ Burns <laughs> fan. The, just as you guys were saying, I loved both of these teams as like sleeper picks and the tourney to pick. And the fact that they're playing each other crushes me, which means I have to get rid of one of them. In March, I always like, do I second guess myself or not? So mm-hmm. I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to second guess myself. And I'm doing Creighton here. You know, they got crushed by Xavier um, in, in their, their last game of the year. Yeah. Uh, at the championship game, but I don't know. I just like the way they're playing. They're, they're, they beat a hot Villanova team that finally got their guy back. They got Justin Moore back, so I like their momentum there. I like the uh, the guard and big combo that they got with Nemhard and Cockbrenner. They're studs, and I just... I don't know. I'm just ready for the, the Jays to fly, so I'm, I'm taking them here. I'll probably regret it, but uh, because I like my Wolfpack, and I'm going against what my heart was telling me in the last in our last pod but yeah i'm gonna ride with the blue jays here and i'm gonna ride with them for a while spoiler alert when we get down to it heck yeah uh i back that completely i i love creighton i think it's really just a really balanced team and i think it is the only team in the country where all five starters average over 10 points so true balance there but yeah nc state if they're shooting the ball if smith and joiner are knocking down threes i think they win this game easily um they kind of showed sort of the jekyll and hyde that they have in the acc tournament I mean, the first game they played, I think Smith had like, what, 35 points? He had like 20 at half, something insane. Um, but the next game, he couldn't hit a shot, which was kind of similar to what it was down the stretch in the ACC turn. I mean, the ACC season, excuse me. And uh, they kind of got pummeled by Clemson. So it's kind of just like, are the guards going to show up for NC State? And then also the big man matchup of, of Burns versus Kalkbrenner, I think, is an important one. Honestly, I don't know who has the edge there. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a prank a slug against like yeah. a warthog. Like I don't know who's gonna win that. It, it it'll definitely be a good matchup. But I do like the Blue Jays. I think they if they can get past these first couple games, I think they can go extremely deep in this tournament. The problem is the first couple games for them are are very very difficult. So this one's a bit of a toss up. I might stay away from it, um, like betting wise, just because I don't <laughs> even know who I would prefer to win. I kind of like both teams. Take um, the over. Yeah, just take the over, basically. I like that. Uh, but yeah, kind of moving on to the next uh, little subcategory we have here. It's going to be upset alert time. Of course, there's always upsets in March, and we always want to see them unless they're playing against your team. But uh, Carter, who, who do you like who is on upset alert in the South region? Uh, in the South region, guys, I want you to keep an eye out on Virginia. They've just got this, they got this injury that is – Kind of uh, remind me of the guy's name. I don't have it. If you guys uh, have it in front of you, Ben Vonderplas. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, kind of a glue guy for them, and uh, they're they're not. I haven't seen the Virginia that I was hoping to see at this point in the season, and Furman is kind of a scary mid-major team. Um, so I would look out for them, and just on the reverse side, I know a lot of people probably want to pick Charleston, and I don't know if any of you are going to speak to it. But I'm going to steer away from that. People are going to see the 31 wins and be like, oh, Charleston, they must be good. To that, I say, be weary, because I think that they're a little bit of frauds. And now that I say that, they're going to like get to the Elite Eight. So I'm just going to throw that out there. But my upset pick here is Furman over Virginia. I like that a lot. Aiden, what are you thinking? I feel the same way about this Virginia team. This is, does not seem like one of Bennett's better teams. Seems like I mean, he's got some seniors in there. Seems like just like the remnants of that like really golden age of Virginia basketball. I could definitely see them losing to Furman here. I think regardless, I would have either San Diego State or Charleston advancing past them in the next round if I do if Virginia were to win. Yeah. I am kind of sharing the same feelings about San Diego State and Charleston. I like Charleston a lot. Pat Kelsey is a great coach. Um great he's coach. coach at, coach at Withrop that brought them to the tournament. He will be coaching a power five conference within the next couple of years. I can promise sure. you that. But this is a tough matchup for Charleston. San Diego State's got a really good defense, especially against threes. I mean, with their three-point variance, obviously, if Charleston gets hot, I could definitely see them coming out ahead. But I do think this is a tough 12-5 for them. That's how a lot of the, about a lot of the 12-5s in this, but specifically here. 
So I don't know if I see a lot of upset potential in the South. I think the five seeds um, this year are maybe the strongest they've ever been. I mean, we'll get to a lot more past this, but I mean, Duke, Miami, and then as well, San Diego State. I think those are three solid teams. San Diego State out of the Mountain West, I think they are legit. That is the one team in that conference I do respect a lot. And I do just enjoy their style of play, kind of just grind out games, but also like decent offensively. And it's kind of, you know, similar to Virginia's play style and defense focus first. But, I mean, Virginia in the ACC tournament just looked terrible offensively. Kike Clark seems to have lost all of his confidence shooting the ball, and they need him to score, basically. Because, I mean, their guards are okay with Armand Franklin by his side. And then, of course, just... <laughs> yeah, true, IU transfer. Uh, and Reese Beekman, he's very good defensively, and so is Clark. But, I mean, offensively, they don't have that much to give. And losing uh, Vanderplas, who is probably their best shooter, probably besides uh, Armand Franklin, is a big loss offensively for them. I think they're in a lot of trouble. And spoiler alert, I like Furman and Charleston in this bracket. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going full March Madness meta here. I don't care. I think Got to. it'll be a really fun second round matchup as well. I do like Charleston in that. But Charleston offensively, I think it's just elite. And I think they are probably, maybe other than Oral Roberts, you know, the best mid-major team in this entire bracket. And I don't think they're getting left out of the Sweet 16. So I like them going deep. Although San Diego State is very, very good. So that's 100% one of the best, I think, games, uh, you know, in the first couple of days. But past that, any sort of sleeper uh, possible upset teams? Baylor, UC Santa Barbara, I guess, um, matchup. But yeah, what do you think, Gary? I could see it, you know. Again, this is not the, the Baylor team of 2021 or of 2020, whenever that year was. Gosh, time's a blur. But yeah, I, I could see it. UCSB is a pretty good shooting team. Baylor is not the most exciting Big 12 team in this in this champ in this tournament. I think they're vulnerable. Like in the next matchup, I do have a little upset there in the in the brewing when Baylor gets to the second round. If they do, I could see it happen. It's definitely a popular pick for sure, but I, I personally don't see it for me. I agree. I think once you get down to the the three seeds, it does get a little bit difficult to to beat them first round. And obviously, two fifteen is a historic upset that rarely happens, but. You always love to see it. Zona Princeton, I think, could be an interesting matchup. Ivy League schools tend to do okay in the tournament. Um, usually not seated at 15. I feel like that is kind of a low seating for Princeton as they weren't the favorites in the Ivy League, and Yale probably would have been like a 13 at least. So that's interesting to see. Arizona, you know, they had a strong, I think, end of the season, so they're probably good. Baylor is kind of a, a little bit different. I mean, they lost to Iowa State in the conference tournament, who was on just an, an insane spiral. So maybe their confidence is wavering a little bit. I mean, they do still have elite, elite guards, Keontae George, Adam Flagler, LJ Cryer. I like their chances. Uh, their second round matchup is going to be the defining one, I think, for them. But yeah, I, I would be surprised if if there were any massive upsets in this region uh, beyond the 13 seed, I would say. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Specifically with the Arizona Princeton game, I guess we'll get to that in a little bit. But that is definitely, that is my favorite bet for the first round is Arizona minus 14 and a half. Nice. I thought oh, Yale nice. was actually I thought Yale was pretty decent this year and yeah. seeing them lose to Princeton was very surprising to me. Arizona's offense, I just I don't see a ton. I don't see anything there. There's some other ones I like in the other regions, but from my initial reaction, I think the South might be pretty chalk with the top teams. I agree. Um and I say we, we keep moving along here to my next uh the next category, which is definitely my favorite, and it's titled Onions <laughs> Onions <laughs> in honor of Bill Raftery. He's going to be calling all the best games, hopefully. But basically, we just want to eliminate, you know, down to the final final, uh, you know, matchup here in the region. Who are your two Elite Eight teams matching up? And uh, I said we definitely pick a winner as well. But let, let's start off with you, Carter. Who are your two Elite, elite Eight teams from the South? So I'm taking, uh, you know, against my better judgment, as always, is, is Bama. We talked about it last episode, uh, the Brandon Miller situation. <laughs> you know, I I. I would really like Alabama to not be good, but they are. So I think they're getting through West Virginia. I think they're getting through San Diego state. And I think they're getting to the elite eight there. And then in, in one of my brackets, I do have Creighton going through, but here I'm going Arizona. So I am chalk in this region when it all comes <laughs> down to it. I have, I've got some upsets later down the line. I think this is the, the chalkiest region I have, but. But yeah, I think that's going to be a really fun game. You know, I think Arizona is just is vicious. And I think that their bigs 
they're, they're they have more bigs that can deal with Creighton if they get to Creighton um with Tubelas and um I always forget the other guy's name how you pronounce his name Balo but, Balo that's it thank you so I got Arizona and Bama in my lead eight in the south for sure yeah I like that Aiden here are your picks I'm um, in the same boat as Carter actually I, wow. I think this is a uh, this is my one region where I went talking to the elite eight Baylor definitely has the potential in the guards like you said Cody to kind of get through Arizona but they don't feel like the same Baylor team defensively as in years past and this Arizona team is really rolling right now. Kirk Risa just seems like he is due for some ridiculous March Madness moment, whether that be him playing good or bad. Um, yeah. Just just punching a guy out or something. Yeah. <laughs> something ridiculous, like Dylan Brooks level showboating. <laughs> but I, I do see uh, Bama and Arizona. And then I have Alabama making it to the Final Four. Just kind of a, a wagon at this point. I have Bama as well in, in this position. And... I don't know. I feel like, I mean, they are the number one overall seed, so it makes sense, but I feel like they got a fairly easy draw compared to some of the other ones, that 8-9 match especially. Well, I mean, it is West Virginia. I, I still don't think it's a good matchup against Alabama, though, just because like they have bigs. They have very good guards as well. Pretty elite team, Bama. But alongside them, I, I do not have Arizona. I'm actually going to go Creighton here. Nice. Um, and it, It's kind of a toss-up for me, that Creighton-Baylor game. I think that's going to be a great game if they both do advance, obviously. Um, but I think the winner of that will probably move along to Houston, if I'm being honest. You know, Arizona, they don't impress me that much. I think Kirk Creesa is unbelievably overrated. And come March, I feel like he's just going to be chucking every time he sees the, you know, an opening. And Courtney Ramey, I do like a lot. Tubelas and Balo is just a matchup issue. But if Creighton does advance past Baylor, I mean, they have the bigs to go with them, and, and they can kind of even go a little small and kind of spread out uh, to Bellis a little bit, which I think would be a good strategy, but still have the length to guard him in the post, which is obviously super important. So I don't know. It's going to come down to a lot of little things, I think, here. And like I said, I think this bracket is completely wide open. I could see Zona getting hot. Like if Zona, if Kirk Risa uh, turns into Steph Curry all of a sudden in March, I mean, they're they're going to the Final Four almost undoubtedly, but I kind of just doubt it happens, so... I'm I'm going with the Blue Jays, you know, to win that side. And then I think Bama, unless a West Virginia shocker, which I would love to see, but I think they'll pretty much walk into the Elite Eight as well. Um, but yeah, definitely a fun South region. All right. And then kind of moving into the later parts here of uh, our categories, I do want to just shout out a couple more dark horse teams. Obviously, we've been talking about pretty much all of them in general. But in with, in with this too, kind of, you know, Final Four potential, you know, thinking – here with the Cinderella teams, especially sort of like a, a loyal a Chicago type run where they just get incredibly hot and, you know, make it all the way to Houston. Uh, Carter, we'll definitely start off with you. Who do you think has, you know, Houston potential out of these bunch? Uh, well, I, if Creighton counts as a sleeper, that would that would be mine. Uh, but then I think that the flashy pick would be Charleston. But the sleeper of sleepers would be Furman to get past San Diego State and then to get to Bama to be crushed by Bama. So that that would be it for me. I I do I want to correct that I was looking at my Hoosier bracket when I said Arizona was going. So I'm looking at my rational bracket and I did have Creighton. So I'm in your camp, now, Ooh. Cody. So love for the Blue Jays. Love it. You're, love it. You're welcome. So yeah, I got the Blue Jays in my Elite Eight here too. So that's my sleeper pick. And then I guess Furman too. Look out for Furman. Yeah, They'll lose in the first round now that I said that. So <laughs> yeah, probably. I think it'd be dope to see Charleston or Furman just match up with Alabama because I That'd think they'd be, uh, you know, not taken very seriously by uh, the Crimson Tide. My Cinderella, it is going to be Charleston for, for this group. Nice. I don't know. I, I think if they get past that first game, there really isn't anybody else in the bracket or in the South region, excuse me, who is as good defensively as San Diego State. So if they are able to get past that game, I think it's kind of wide open on, on how far they could go. Them against Bama uh, to go to the Elite Eight would be such a fun matchup. Just offense on offense. That game would be like 100 to 99 or something. So I'd love to see that. But my uh, Power 5 sleeper, I'm going to go with Mizzou. I mean, obviously I'm talking them up, but it's sort of the same thing. If if they can get past the first round especially, but obviously the second round too, which would be a, a matchup with Arizona, which is probably, other than maybe Charleston and Bama in that region, I guess, um, the best offensive team. There's kind of just like a, a bunch of offense in this region, which is super fun. But they're all kind of matched up with defensive sort of squads first. So it's going to be who's going to win out in the first couple of rounds to really determine who's going to go deep. But those would be my two. Aiden, any thoughts on, on some sleepers? Charleston's definitely the trendy pick. But uh, I like what Carter said about Furman. That would be very on brand for everyone to kind of hop on the Charleston bandwagon. 
and then Furman just beats Virginia and then also beats San Diego State to move on to the Sweet 16. So I think either one of those teams could definitely see it. Like you said, Mizzou and NC State as well, just kind of the same recipe for success. They just get hot from deep. And I think we're probably going to find it's a pretty common theme for what we think about the rest of the bracket as well. Awesome. And then moving into the last segment of each uh, region, we do want to give, well, definitely don't want to give betting advice here, but we do want to give some of our possible bets that we may be laying down. And I know, oh man, yeah, I mean, you're a massive parlay guy. I got to hear what you were thinking for, <laughs> for some of these lines. <laughs> the first round is tricky. Yeah. I really, I really like Arizona. My 14 half against Princeton. I think they might just put the smack down on them. I will probably be putting a little same game parlay into that game with some stupid Arizona stats. Wouldn't be surprised if they scored 80, 90 points in the game. Outside of that, I'm not seeing a whole lot, right? I think San Diego State and Charleston's at like four or five and a half right now. But I feel like that's probably a tight game, regardless of who comes out ahead. And that seems to be the theme with a lot of these games. I think we're in a lot of good games out of the South. I think it's a pretty well-balanced region, even if Bama does have a pretty easy walk into the Final Four. Yesterday, when I was looking at the lines, I believe Furman and Charleston were both at plus five and a half. Ooh. I would think at least one of those is going to hit. So I'll probably bet on both, honestly. Maybe don't parlay them, but just bet on them separately. Because <laughs> I think one one of those teams will, at least, if not win, make it a very close game at the end. But my big one for this region is Mizzou Moneyline. They're plus 110. Uh, they're first oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And nice. Utah State, which I was a little bit surprised by. Um, so I'm pounding that. Definitely going to put a few bucks on it. Yeah, I mean, in general, I think, like you said, there's going to be a lot of close games. So I feel like even if you do bet some of the covers, like they'll just hit just because they lose by two or three most times. But yeah, pound on the Tigers. That, that's my big one. Carter, pound on the Tigers. I love it. <laughs> going back to the the Furman Charleston ones, if you're going to bet on anyone, any of those games, I always, if there's a Virginia game, I'm always betting the under. If you're playing Virginia, you're playing Wisconsin because these teams should just like to slug it out on defense and take their time on offense. Um, now they could be sped up by Furman's high octane offense. So we'll see what happens there. But I would take the under there. I haven't looked at any lines or anything. So I'm going to deviate towards Aiden, who seems like the professional here. So <laughs> yeah, he's professional at losing, probably. Yeah. But... <laughs> Same. Awesome. So we keep it moving along to the next region. That's going to be the East region, which is, of course, headed by the Purdue Boilermakers as the number one seed there. Definitely, again, a lot, a lot of interesting matchups. We'll jump right into the the best first round matchups uh, and the best games of the weekend, in my opinion, the 8-9. I think this is a really good one. It's the Memphis Tigers against the FAU Owls. Sort of a a clash of mid-majors in a sense. I mean, the American Conference, it is what it is. But both these teams have a crap ton of talent and are just really fun to watch both. Yeah, I'm jacked for this game. Carter, what are your thoughts on this 8-9? Memphis obviously coming off of a heater of a performance against Houston in the championship game. I don't think anyone really expected that. FAU also is similar in the Charleston camp this whole year where, you know, they, they, they cracked the top 25 at one point, were one of the last undefeated teams in the country. But kind of how I say Charleston is a bit of a is a bit of a fraud kind of I actually kind of buy into the Florida Atlantic magic. So I know a lot of people are going to take Memphis here. And for that reason, I'm taking Florida Atlantic in this matchup. I think it's one of those where people are already talking about, you know, the Memphis Purdue matchup and then like Memphis trying to beat Purdue. But I think people are looking too far ahead and are going to we're going to be one of those classic. Oh, I missed the first step in the three step part. So I'm just going Florida Atlantic here. And also uh, Dusty May, a former uh, IU alum. So there you go. <laughs> Shout out. I completely agree. I, I think this is a bit of a trap game for Memphis. I mean, coming off such a good win against Houston in the uh, American Conference Championship. Although Marcus Sass was out, which is definitely the X factor there. True. Um, I think they are looking ahead to the second round. Purdue is, I mean, I feel like they're sitting ducks on, on most of these people's radar. For some reason, they're being labeled as overrated. Who would ever think that? I mean, come on, guys. But yeah, I think whoever does win this game, it is going to be a very interesting matchup in round two, assuming Purdue doesn't lose to a 16 seed, which, you know, is possible. I would 100% pick FAU here as well. I think all year they've they've kind of just been impressive. I thought, honestly, they may give up a bid steal to UAB in their conference tournament, but they kind of yeah. handle them uh, with ease a little bit, even with uh, that UAB team being red hot. Uh, one of my favorite teams to watch too, just, you know, mid-major wise. Um, yeah, I like the Owls here. Memphis, I mean, obviously their guards are unbelievably good. Uh, you know, the the transfer from SMU, who's the player of the year in the conference last year. 
Uh, I don't even know his name. It's on the Davis, I believe. Kendrick, well, I think. They got that one guy who's like 28 years old, I think, basically. Yeah. He's been playing for years. Yeah. The also, Robbie Hummel of their team. Yeah. Yeah. They're very experienced, which is weird for a Memphis team who I feel like is usually always very young. Yeah. Obviously, Monty Bates transferred out, sadly, so we won't get to see him. But this, this is going to be one of the best games of the day, I think. Uh, Aiden, do you think uh, differently from us, or do you like FAU too? I like FAU a lot. I think I am kind of getting sucked into that Memphis bandwagon already looking towards Purdue kind of thing. Kendrick Davis is just unreal. Like you said, transferring in conference and then winning play, like winning play of the year right after averaging 22 points a game. It feels like Penny kind of is getting his, his feet underneath him. Finally, this feels like the most solid Memphis team, like the Memphis team I actually trust compared to the last couple of years. Um, like you said, they actually have some upperclassmen, some experienced players. I do like them in this first round, but I would not be shocked at all if FAU could, um, take them down i'm sure the line is very very slim yeah it's definitely i think gonna be a good one and even last year i mean memphis was on this eight nine line too and they hung with uh gonzaga who i feel like everybody thought they were gonna blow them out by 30 obviously uh jalen duran is not on that team a lot of, a lot of different people but I, I would not count out the tigers in any sense in this tournament I, I think they can make a run and are you at all concerned or does this feel good to you for the purdue because they're playing a a 16 seed, it's a play-in game. Uh -huh. uh, one team that is a sub-500 team and then one team that lost their conference championship but is in anyway because Merrimack isn't eligible to be in the tournament. <laughs> do you feel good about that or do you think they have chips on their shoulders because of it? You know, it could be, it could go both ways. Fairly Dickinson, uh, just a great name for a college as well. So True. I kind of hope we play them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's always scary. A tournament game is always a tournament game. Yeah. I don't know if any of them can really match up with Zach Eady which is a big question for the, for FAU in Memphis as well. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be nervous as hell when, when Purdue plays that 16 seed. So <laughs> we got to hope for the best, but it is possible. You know, I, I might take the 16 seed cover. It's probably going to be like 25 <laughs> or something, and I, I doubt we win by that much. So, yeah. Amazing. Just wanted to get your pulse check there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it, it's still beaten. Uh, yeah, moving on to the next matchup here. Uh, going to be going to the 7-10 with the Michigan State Spartans against the UC yet oh, excuse me against the USC Trojans little Pac-12 Big Ten matchup Aiden what do, you, what do you think about this one well this is uh soon to be just a Big Ten matchup yeah another uh two years here <laughs> this will be a Big Ten conference game which is unbelievable but um I don't know Michigan State I was really starting to get behind them towards the end of the year it felt like they were finally starting to put it together like even when they're losing at the end of the year like they lost in overtime at Iowa and just like the craziest finish to a game I've seen in the last couple of years. Then to drop an egg to Ohio State in the Big Ten tournament just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. USC did not finish the season super strong either. They lost to Arizona State in the Pac-12 tournament. But I do, I'm a big fan of Boogie Ellis. That is a dude who just, he can shoot you in or out of any game, right? Yes. Just depending on how he's feeling it. And I do got to give some love to my guy, Bill Walton, one of the greatest <laughs> commentators in sports. Conference of champions. And I'm going to ride with the Conference of Champions here. But wow. uh, you guys definitely have your pulse on the Michigan State basketball program a little bit more than I do this year. Yeah. You know, Izzo in March, as much as he, like, you know, he hasn't won in a long time in a big way. But ever since that time when they were the two seed and they played Middle Tennessee, they haven't real. they have never lost a first round game except for the weird year when they had the play in game with UCLA and Michigan State, which is an unbelievable bubble game, play-in game, which was two years ago. And then UCLA went on to the Final Four. So I'm just riding with Izzo in March here just for the first round, at least. Like you said, the Ohio State loss is a bad taste in the mouth. But also, Ohio State was getting hot at the right time. I called it on the last episode, Cody. Yeah. You were here. You witnessed it. I said, I watch call. out for Ohio State. And I don't know. Holman might be on his way out. Might be getting some offers from other places. That's got some buzz in the ear there. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to roll with Sparty here. I think Izzo knows how to turn it on in March for at least a weekend. So I'm going to go with that. I do agree with you, Carter. Um, I think Michigan State's guards do match up with Boogie pretty well. Drew Peterson is also a problem on USC. I, I do like their team in general, but... I don't know. It, it's a tough one. I think this will be one of the closer games. I saw a statistic as well. A Big Ten team as a seven seed, I don't think has ever lost, or maybe maybe it's like the past 20 years or something, probably, probably never lost. I don't want to say that. Oh, no. But uh, that could be broken because Northwestern's a seven as well. And I think maybe one of those teams will get upset, uh, which we'll talk about later. But 
I like Michigan State a lot. I mean, A.J. Hogard and, you know, Tyson Walker, elite backcourt, kind of the best of both worlds. You got a really good shooter and then a really good passer, really good point guard. Um, and then Joey Hauser has been red hot recently. I think sort of his emergence as uh, their best shooter and kind of their go-to shooter at times is important. So I like Izzo here. It is March, and um, I don't think USC is that deep. They have a couple really good players, but – I don't know if it can carry them, you know, deep in this tournament. So I'm going to go with the Spartans. But yeah, I say we keep it moving along. It's maybe one of those interesting games in the tournament this year. Kentucky versus Providence, the 6-11 matchup. Providence just barely squeaking in in that 11 seed. Definitely did not have the best ending to the season, but have a lot of good wins in general. And of course, the story here is Bryce Hopkins, who is uh, Providence's best player. And uh, I gave him the, the Big East hoopy if you watched our last one. He's a Kentucky transfer. So, I mean, this is a massive game for him. I think it's going to come down to him mostly, too. I mean, if he plays well, I think they have a very good shot to win this. But Kentucky's deep. That They have some depth and and good defensively, surprisingly, which I think is not the case with them. But yeah, I'll throw it over to you, Aiden. What do you think about this game? This is a tough one. I think for Providence, that definitely Bryce Hopkins is just sort of the key to their success. Kentucky has just been so up and down, but it seemed like they're starting to play well towards the end of the year like starting to finally surround and figure out how to use the reigning national player of the year, which is crazy that Calipari is still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I do like Kentucky here. I think this will be a pretty low scoring game um, just coming from the big East and the way Kentucky has started to play recently, just how much they put emphasis on slowing the ball down, trying to play better defense. I like Kentucky here. Would not be surprised if Providence comes out ahead, but I think they avenged their St. Peter's L <laughs> last year. At least one one. That is true. I, I forgot about that completely. I think they, that would motivate them at least a little bit to win one game. I am going to pick Kentucky here as well. I like the way the guards have been playing. Uh, CJ Frederick, I couldn't remember his name last episode, but he's been hooping recently. And Austin Reeves as well. Um, he, I mean, he's turned into their best scorer, basically. I feel like early in the season, maybe they were running their offense a little bit too much through Sheboy when he's more of just a Baycott guy of, you know, we're going to chuck threes and you're going to get the rebounds and that's just how it's going to go. Overall, I think, like I said, Kentucky's just a little bit deeper in my mind. I think this could be one of the games that comes down to a buzzer beater. And uh, if Providence, if, if Hopkins is the one taking the last shot, I don't think he's missing personally. So I'd love to see that. But yeah, Carter, what do you think about this game? Well, good news for Kentucky is they don't have to play Vanderbilt. So I think they're <laughs> going to be going to be pleased there and i also think if calipari loses this game i think they're once again calling for his head in lexington kentucky you lose two first round games two years in a row to the lower seed that's not that's not kentucky basketball boys so i think that he's going to be furious to get this dub so i do think i do like them over providence who's the wheels are kind of falling off a little bit for providence and also ed cooley's got a little coaching talks in his ear too could be a <laughs> Front runner for some Notre Dame or Georgetown actions, what I've been hearing. So Ooh. watch out. I'd like to see Cooley leave. Honestly, he's been there forever, but definitely an underrated coach, I think. But yeah, awesome. Let's keep it moving along into upset alert. A lot of fun lower seeds in this one. Very notably, Oral Roberts Duke. I think that probably is my biggest uh, you know, matchup of the first couple of days. Just two red hot teams. You're just preaching to the choir because um that Oral Roberts team of two years ago, this Oral Roberts team is better. Max Amos is a beast. They've got this Arkansas transfer who's just like a giant who's the like praying Zach, mantis, they call him, the, yeah. the praying mantis, basically. <laughs> yes. So, and I just, I hate that they're up against Duke. Any other five seed, I would have thrown them, throw them through, no question. But Duke is playing really hot right now. I'm also just going to go, you know, it's John Shire's first year in the tournament as head coach. And uh, Paul Mills has been there before and has taken down a giant before in Ohio State. Uh, so I'm going with Oral Roberts here. Yeah, uh, this is going to be my my sleeper pick for sure. And then, you know, if anyone wants to talk about that 413 matchup versus Tennessee, which you could see going that way too. But I like Oral Roberts to the Sweet 16, boys. So I'm uh, that's my that's my fun pick for this region. But that's that's what I like there. I love it. I feel the same way. I do think Oral Roberts will come out on top of this game. Duke is red hot right now, but they are. The ACC, the ACC it, it is having a down year for sure. Um, I think they probably were a little bit underseeded. I thought they were for sure going to be at least a three or a four. Yeah. So kind of a tough draw for Oral Roberts altogether. Um, but I do like them first round. And you're talking about Tennessee, Louisiana. I'm picking Louisiana in this one too, man. The Raging Cajuns. The Raging Cajuns. 
And yeah, the first two uh, regions we're going through here, I'm picking both the 12 and the 13 seeds for all, all four of those games. So I'm not sure. I think this could be a crazy year. I think kind of in, in both those brackets, it could end up at least one of those teams wins. Yeah, obviously Tennessee without Zakai Ziegler is a massive loss. They really are terrible offensively, but unbelievably good defensively. So if they can hit a couple shots against Louisiana, they probably will win. Uh, I just don't know if they'll do that. So that's definitely a, a good one to watch out for too. But yeah, and what do you think about these upset games? Tennessee, I, this is not the Tennessee team that's going to make a run, um, no. like you said. No. With their offense the last month, they just, I don't think they have enough to get it done. But at the same time, they just play so physical on defense. I do like them in this first game. I think it'll be a super close game. Definitely some they'll be on upset alert, but I do feel like they'll get through it. I actually do like Duke as well against Oral Roberts. I hate this matchup because both of these teams are just playing so well right now. Like you said, Carter, like this Oral Roberts team is better than the Sweet 16 team from two years ago. Max Adams is an absolute stud, but I was going through some of his games against high-level competition. Went one for 10 when they played Houston earlier this year and got crushed. Um, they lost by like 50 to Houston, which, you know, a lot of teams have lost by 50 to the Houston team. Um, went four for 11 when they lost to St. Mary's. Worried about Duke's athletes. And like you said, Cody, I feel like this Duke team easily could have been a three or four seed. I feel like they're definitely underseeded. And a little spoiler alert, I do like the Blue Devils to go pretty far. Seems just very fitting, a big middle finger from Duke University that Coach K finally steps down. And then <laughs> if John Shire were to just lead him to a Final Four in his first year, especially with how North Carolina season went, yeah, um, just seems like something the NCAA would love to cook up. That'd be awesome. I think Duke does match up with them pretty well defensively, too. Like, they could put Proctor on, you know, Max Abnus. Uh, he's got the length at the guard position. And then with, with the the Prank Mantis, I mean, it's hard to guard him, but Derek Lively is probably one of the best interior defenders uh, in the country, too, although offensively he's garbage. But yeah, it'll definitely be a good one. That's 100% on my radar is, like I said, one of the games of the, of the first couple rounds for sure. Any other upsets you guys want to throw out? Nobody's mentioned Purdue yet, which is always, you know, happy for me. You know, um, well, I'm going to once again call out that I was just a fraud because I was looking at my other bracket. I have Oral Roberts going far in one of my brackets, but I do have Duke over Purdue when it gets there. I think that Purdue is actually going to answer the answer the call and listen to the haters, and they're going to prove their worth and not lose in these two games, these two first games, and everyone's going to be like, oh, wow, they're legit. And then when everyone thinks they're legit, they're going to lose. That's what I think <laughs> personally. That's really all on my radar. You know, I, I like the Catamounts of Vermont. I think Marquette's just too hot right now. And um, I, I, I'm not too high on Montana State, so I think Kansas State's going to get by pretty easily. So that's all that's really on my radar in terms of big upsets for sure. I don't hate Vermont either. I mean, they've been in the tournament pretty consistently the past five years, and they haven't really won a game yet. So yep. maybe this would be the year. I think Marquette is a little overseeded at a two, but they obviously have a very good squad. They obviously won the Big East regular season and conference tournament, which is not easy to do. Tyler Kolak, shout out to him. But yeah, I could see that. Montana State, I know nothing about, and I like K-State a lot, so I doubt that happens. But honestly, out of those lower-seeded games, uh, the one, if I had to pick one of who's going to lose, I would probably pick Purdue. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> anyway, oh, nice. any other thoughts? Yeah, I don't really see it here with these lower seeds. <laughs> kind of like all three of these top three seeds, at least to make it past their lower level competition. And if Purdue loses to a 16 seed, I think you got a fire painter at that point. I think you got a clean house at that point, or at least get like a nun or somebody to come do a seance <laughs> on Purdue. You need a sister that. Jane. Yeah, they if Purdue had their own sister Jean, I don't think any of this would have happened. But you know, <laughs> public schools, man, what are you gonna do? That's public true, man. It's not in the budget. <laughs> true. I also wanted Painter gone about five years ago, but uh, we move. <laughs> let's, let's move on to onions. <gasps> onions! We've, we've been obviously teasing who we want in the Elite Eight. I'll actually kick us off for this category and uh, pick my Purdue Boilermakers. Matt Painter, he's he's Sweet Sixteen guaranteed. I feel like most years. A one seed is un unprecedented territory, you know, too much pressure probably on, on him this year. But I do think they'll get past. And I'm kind of banking on Oral Roberts to beat Duke because I think Duke does match up pretty well with us. But defensively, I, I think we would be just fine against Oral Roberts, honestly. So I got them on that side. And then the other side, I got K-State coming out. I feel like this lower tier of the bracket, maybe one of the weaker ones in the tournament. 
Uh, Kansas State does have two elite players with Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel. But yeah, I mean, that K-State team is electric, I think. Keontae Johnson deserves to have a deep run in the tourney. So I'd love to see them go far too. But Aiden, who, who are your onions? This is, uh, I feel like this is the most wide open one where I was going through and like trying to figure out where I wanted to finalize my bracket. This is one where I could, could definitely see a couple of different teams making it. Um, I do have Purdue and Duke playing, and I think that'll be a pretty good game. I just like the way this Duke team is playing right now. I like that the ACC has kind of been terrible all year, and then for them to show up for the tournament and win a couple games and get a Duke team to the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight. I don't see Purdue losing that first game. I think people that are picking that, that's more of just like a, a trends thing, a history thing, and have not watched Zach Eady play basketball this year. <laughs> I think you guys will be fine against FAU or Memphis. On the bottom side, I love Marquette. Marquette is just like my team. I have them in my final four this year. Wow. Tyler Golick is like probably my favorite player in college basketball right now. He's awesome. Just such a good guard. So solid. Feels like he always knows what to do, where to go with the ball. And for them to go through and win the Big East regular season. And then they, they had like the third best odds to win the Big East tournament, even though they were the Big East regular season champion. Then to come through and come away with that. I really like Marquette this year. Uh, so I do have them going through Duke to get to the Final Four. I like that. Marquette's one of those teams, too, where they've kind of been doubted all year. It's like I think they just eat that up. I don't know if anybody is really giving them that much of a chance in this in this uh, region. So I think that plays through their advantage. I mean, Shaka Smart, you know he's going to use all of that to, uh, to the utmost ability. Carter, wh- who do you think is going deep here? I would love also to get behind the Marquette train, but I just can't get behind Shaka Smart as of late in March. In my Elite Eight, I'm with you, Cody. I've got I've got Kansas State as well. I think that would be a great storyline for Keontae Johnson. And then I, I just have Duke over Purdue. That whole matchup for me, all of Purdue's matchups in these tournaments is not defined by the Zach Eady performance. I think it's actually defined by their freshman guard play. You know, if they can match up, if they get that Memphis draw, if they can get past their senior guards with their freshman guards, they just got to show up and play senior basketball. If they can do that, I think they can go far in this tourney. But I don't see it right now. So I'm going Duke. And K State in my Elite Eight. And also, just for funsies, I have Izzo and March getting past Marquette. Just for fun, just for chaos. <laughs> I love that. I think seven, seven, uh, two matchups, I think, are underrated. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. I mean, our freshman guards, it is what it is. I think they're decent. We have a couple other guards off the bench who are really good as well, but also they can't break a press. So, I mean, I'm sure Memphis or FAU is going to press the crap out of Purdue almost immediately in that game. And I think Duke would 100% do something similar with that. And they have a lot more length as well, which could be dangerous. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I still got the boilers going all the way, though. As you should. <laughs> Let's talk about some dark horses. I'll kick us off again for this one. I like Michigan State a lot. And, uh, you know, Marquette, second round is a tough matchup. But I think, you know, size-wise, they're just fine. Michigan State plays pretty small. And Marquette doesn't really have any dominant bigs like some of the other Big East teams which I think will definitely come into effect in that game. So I like Sparty possibly going deep. It is sort of the Jekyll and Hyde thing of which team's going to show up, the one that lost to Ohio State or, you know, some of those early season games where their offense was looking a lot better. But it's March, it's Izzo time, I think. Past that, I like FAU a lot. And if if they were matched up against any other one seed other than Purdue, <laughs> I would likely pick them because I didn't pick any eight nines to beat ones. Uh, spoiler alert in my bracket. But I think FAU 100% has that potential. So that would be my other, uh, you know, just general sleeper team. But Carter, uh, who, who are your sleepers here? Uh, yeah, pretty similar. Um, again, if Oral Roberts can get past Duke, I would look out for them. And uh, other than that, I, like you said, I like Sparty as well uh, down, down, the, uh, down the stretch here. And like I have a feeling Tennessee is going to prove the haters wrong and get this first dub. So I don't like the Louisiana sleeper pick. So I'm good there, but also look out for Memphis and FAU past Purdue for yeah. those out there. So people are be, talking. Yeah. Shout out That's to all. those raging Cajuns. I think they're out. off to our stretch of them, but Louisiana's got a squad this year. Aiden, any, any uh, Cinderella runs in, you seen here? Really just the uh, 8, 9, 7, 10. I think any of those four teams, like there is a chance compared to some of the other seeds. Oral Roberts, obviously, then get past Duke. Definitely like them against Tennessee. I would probably say Oral Roberts then is my favorite team. If Even though I do have Duke in my Final Four, or in my Elite Eight, I do think Oral Roberts, if they can get past Duke, they can make a little bit of a run. 
potentially give Purdue some problems in the uh, Sweet 16. I'd love to see that matchup personally, or Robert Purdue. Just kind of, that's like the definition of David versus Goliath in a sense. I think that'll be awesome. Do you get oh. that? Do you get that praying mantis and ED going up against each other? That'd be amazing to watch. <laughs> the the memes just those two would create from that game would be amazing. So I'm down. <laughs> Moving into the last segment, obviously let's talk some bets here. My big one off the bat again is just looking at these 12, 13 matchups. I mean, Oral Roberts right now is plus six and a half, and then Lafayette is plus ten and a half, which I think oh, is a wow. little egregious. So again, kind of similar thing to the to the South. I would say one of those two will probably get it. So again, I think I'm just gonna separately bet on every 12-13 matchup, and half of them will cover. So that'll be my big thing. Uh, Mr. Bet- Betsky himself, Aiden, what you thinking? Well, Cody, I don't know if you'll love to hear this, but whoever Purdue gets between Texas Southern and Fairfield Dixon, I'm hammering that 16 seed plus yeah. money. Whatever there is, it'll probably be like 20 points. Like, this is definitely a very good Purdue team. Is this, are you guys really the type of team that are going to blow people out of the water like that? I feel like every time I'm watching Purdue, it's at least uh, a halfway decent game. So that would be my best bet. There wasn't anything that was looking too crazy on this side of the bracket. I agree, honestly. If if the spread is like 25, or it, it's going to be something ridiculous. I think they will cover. Because, I mean, even if, even if we're up big, they'll just start pressing, and then they'll lose by 10. So, yeah, I buy that. <laughs> Carter, any uh, any picks here from you? Not different from what you guys said. I would just I don't know what the line is for Marquette Vermont, but maybe keep a look at that sp- uh, spread as well. Yeah, I believe it's ten and a half actually, and I would probably Ooh. take Marquette on that. Honestly, I don't know for a two seed. I, I feel like it should be probably a little bit more, but yeah, definitely one to look at. You know, come tournament day. Nice, uh, but awesome. That re- wraps up region number two. We can keep kicking it to the Midwest. This is another I think pretty deep region. Um, Obviously, you have the one seed Houston leading it off. Hopefully, Marcus Sasser is back. I would expect they would sit him against the 16 seed, but I would I would 100% expect him to be back for that 8-9 matchup, and we'll just jump straight into that. It's another really fun one, An- another uh, Big Ten matchup, of course. I feel like they're in all these you know closely seeded games with the Iowa Hawkeyes facing off against uh, the Auburn Tigers. And this is another just offense versus defense matchup. Obviously, Iowa does not care two licks about offense. Fran McCaffrey at the—I mean, excuse me—two licks about defense with Fran McCaffrey at the helm. You know, he just wants to score ninety points, and if they lose, they lose. Auburn on the other side of the coin, defensive first. Obviously, Broom in the middle, the big man, the transfer, is their big time stopper, and they have a lot of quick guards too. Um, I think it's going to be a good one. I personally am going to pick Iowa for this one, uh, just because I don't think Auburn's that good, really. Um, but if they're hitting shots, it's definitely going to be a good game. Um, yeah, Carter, what do you think about this 8-9? This is going to be a battle of coaches that get so mad and so red in the face, True. and I'm mostly excited about that. <laughs> um, I think that Iowa got rid of all their Cinderella magic in that comeback win. And the Fran Stare, I think he used it all up in <laughs> February, and I think he's run out in March. I'm just going with Auburn just because I'm done believing in Fran McCaffrey. I think it's purely out of spite I'm making the pick. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with Auburn again. They're definitely not like, you know, they're not like the Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith, Auburn teams that we've seen for sure, which was also just such a disappointing season from that team. So I think they'll get past this. And then I think that's where the run will end. I was going to say, I love the coaching matchup. I think the over under on Tex, uh, you got to take the over this game. Ooh, like, yeah, uh, take a prop bet for sure. I mean, just, just screaming at the rest. These are two teams that both just were pretty trendy picks last year. I feel like a lot of people had Iowa going pretty far before they lost to Richmond. Shout out the yeah. A-10. Um, and then same with Auburn with Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith. Both just did not make it as far as they wanted to. Iowa's defense is just I, – I, I can't do it. Not in March. Yeah. I can't pick it. <laughs> Auburn's guards scare me. Katie Johnson and Wendell Green are just the ultimate shoot-you-out-of-the-game type of guards. I think they're both shooting under 40% this year, which is horrible. But at the same time, I do like Auburn's ability to at least – play a little bit of defense and cannot trust McCaffrey. I really like Katie Johnson. He's basically just like human wrecking ball. I would call him uh, that guy going to the paint is, is awesome to watch. But yeah. It'll definitely be a good one. I feel like it really is. Whoever's hitting jumpers in this game is going to win it, which I mean, that's basketball in general. And who cares? Anywho, moving on to, again, I keep saying this, but this probably is one of my favorite games as well. The seven ten matchup from this uh, bracket, the Penn state Nittany lions ref in the big 10. Going against, I think, the severely underseated Texas A&M Aggies. This is a fun one. Uh, Aiden, Aiden, what are your thoughts on this one? 
This is my favorite seven ten out of all four of them. Yeah, um, I think both of these teams, like you said, Texas A and M, probably a little underseeded. Didn't really have a great out of conference, but then just tore through the SEC outside of Alabama, who they did beat once. But then Penn State, their run in the Big Ten tournament from going even like two or three weeks ago, I felt like they were very much either on the bubble or not really being considered. And yeah. then just played really, really well down the stretch. I mean, Pickett is like, he's got to be everyone's favorite player to watch in this tournament. Him and Lundy, I think both have that like Cinderella potential. Um, I do have Penn State in this one, but I really also like a and I could see this going either way. Yeah, this is going to be a hell of a matchup. I would favor the Nittany Lions as well. Maybe a little of the Big, Big Ten bias showing through, but I mean, they have been red hot. Coming into our last episode, I mean, they were straight on the bubble. They were probably in the Lenardi's like next four out. I did pick them just barely to squeak in and into the final, uh, in, not excuse me, not the, the first four in Dayton, and they ended up being a 10 seed. Like they were comfortably, comfortably in uh, because of that Big Ten tourney run. But yeah, uh, Carter, what, what do you think about this matchup? I see my Big Ten bias and I attempt to separate it in March. So I'm also using the same argument I used for Iowa to rationalize that I think the magic has run out. I think that they were just playing to get into the tournament. And I think that they're satisfied with that. The first tournament in 12 years, 13 years, I think. And also I hate when teams go into tournaments when their coaches are also getting chatted about in their ear about other potential coaching opportunities for Micah Shrewsbury also. Again, this could go either way. I'm so excited for this game, but I'm going with the Aggies in this one. Yeah, I feel like that is honestly the, the smart and the safe pick to go with AM. Um, and yeah, shout out Shrewsbury. I mean, he's got a shot out of a cannon here just because of that run. Former Purdue assistant, him and Painter are still boys. Uh, I think he deserves a big time job. He's, he's a really good coach, but their style of play kind of, I don't know, it's just chuck threes and hope, hopefully some of them go down. It kind of just works. You know, whoever outshoots each other kind of wins, but AM's defense is, is definitely stout. So it's going to be fun. Sure. Uh, cool. Moving on to the last of these, uh, you know, mid tier games, we got the Iowa State Cyclones, the sixth seed, kind of sputtered at the end of the year. Matching up against our first uh, first four matchup, Mississippi State and Pitt, the Pitt Panthers, who everybody was saying was not going to get in, uh, but did barely squeak into the field. I guess we can just start off with the first four game, and um, it is an interesting one. I think it's better than the other first four matchup. Who do you guys think is going to prevail between uh, the battle of the SEC and the ACC here? I think Mississippi State, just for me, it really could go either way. Obviously, Pitt, I like Capel. I like their coach a lot. Um, but I just kind of like Mississippi State's vibe more. I don't know. I I can't even place why I like it, but I just think it's I just think it's right. So I think Mississippi State wins that. But actually, in this bracket, I've realized like I don't have any eleven seeds winning. So I actually have Iowa State here, even though they're kind of fell off the wagon a little bit. You know, we talked about that last week when they uh, they lost their one of their star players for for mental health reasons. Um, so, but I do think that they'll prove the haters wrong. I'm a big prove the haters wrong guy. I think the Cyclones will get out of the first round at least. I completely agree here, honestly. I think um, Iowa State, I don't know, they, they showed a little bit of life in the Big 12, you know, conference tournament. They took down Baylor, which I was extremely surprised by. You know, they, they actually shot it really well, too. Obviously, they don't have as much offense, you know, losing, you know, Caleb Grill. But, like, they still have a couple good shooters on the team. A little bit better, I think, offensively than I thought they would be losing him. I mean, it's Big 12 basketball. Like, they survived that, you know, grueling season somehow. I think they could take down either Pitt or Mississippi State. I would actually probably favor Pitt. Uh, I think it is going to be a good game. Uh, but the Pitt Panthers, I think they're underrated. I think they should have been probably on the 10 or 9 line. Um, I'm not too sure why they were so far down. They even had a decent non-conference schedule. They beat Northwestern early in the year, which is a quality win. So I'd probably pick them, but yeah, the Cyclones, I, I think are a little underrated here. Yeah. I feel like Ohio or Iowa state, they're not a team. I love making it super far, but just looking at these 11 seeds, they're not, neither one are super inspiring. Mississippi state may be the most disgusting brand of basketball <laughs> in the country. That's coming from someone who's watched Dayton's basketball team this year. Just play so slow. Um, they can definitely grit out wins and I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Pitt, but I think Iowa State will take care of potentially some like Ewing theory kind of potential with Iowa State with grill out. Um, yeah. you know, the rest of the guys stepping up and Hoiberg's a good coach. So I would, I would not be surprised if Iowa State or Iowa State won a couple games. 
I don't know about Hoiberg. Shout out Bulls Nation. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I do like that pick. Let's just go straight into the upsets here. I think this is a really fun bracket as well. Highlighted, of course, by the Indiana Hoosiers on the four line. Oh man, I would love to see them lose first round. Just be just because, you know, Purdue's done it so many times. But Kent State is actually a very tough 13 seed, I think. Probably yeah. the best 13 seed in the field. And then, of course, the 12 5 is highlighted by Miami and Drake as well. A really good matchup. But we got to throw it over to my boy Carter. What do you think about this Kent State team? Do you think uh, they're going to put up any sort of a fight? I've probably watched more Kent State basketball clips the past <laughs> day or than anyone in the nation probably yeah this kent state team is scary i think they're definitely the best 13 seed in this tournament actually um it was a team i definitely didn't want to play we know we played kent state back in the day in 2002 in the elite eight to get to the final four people forget really? wow. um so this is kind of a little a little a little rematch per se the key to this game for the indiana hoosiers will be if we can have good guard on ball defense because they love to just set high pick and rolls and get Trace Jackson out of the lane and just have that wide open lane. And they do that all day. So nervous seeing our guard play historically this season. Sometimes can't guard that pick and roll. And then also we're really bad at like, we over help a lot. And uh, then there's just a wide open person for three. So they can also do that. So it is a scary matchup for sure. I still think that just Trace Jackson Davis will just have a not, not this year type of vibe. They're not going to have a St. Mary's repeat. I think he's going to take over and at least get past uh, Kent State here. So I don't like the upset here, although it's a very trendy pick. And I understand why, given Indiana's lackluster performance against a hot Penn State team. That is true. I didn't even think about the Big Ten tournament as well, but I feel like that is kind of a bad loss in hindsight for sure. And sure. I do think Trace Jackson Davis is going to be a problem in this game. That's I don't think they're really going to have an answer for him, which, I mean, nobody really has all year. So that's fair. But I think Kent State is going to go at Jalen Hochefino specifically. Uh, for sure. Defense. I do think he's a good defender, but I think kind of you're just missing Xavier Johnson um, in this round specifically. Totally. Really nice to have him. Uh, and personally, I am going to pick Kent State just because, you know, why not? <laughs> I'm, Fair. A, I'm, a leader. I'm that guy who will pick against IU, against pretty much anybody good. And that is a very tough first round matchup. I was hoping they would draw somebody tough. And they did. So I'm going to go with the Golden Eagles. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think about upsets for this region? I think the Kent State is pretty trendy. I was disappointed to see Kent State draw IU just because I, as a fairly neutral observer, I do really like IU this year. If you just look at their resume, they just don't really have any bad, bad losses. Like no one down at Kent State's caliber. I just, I don't see Kent State having an answer for Trace. And I, I think IU will get through this one if not move forward in the tournament. I agree. It should be a fun one nonetheless, but got to go with the Golden Eagles. Past that, I think Miami-Drake is a good matchup. I kind of just think Miami's overpowered this year, and I don't know, the OVC, they always get a 12 seed. The Drake Bulldogs, I think they're good. I don't know if they're that good. I'd be disappointed if Miami left this early. Uh, their guard play, Nigel Pack, you know, Wong, they pretty much have – uh, Jordan Miller as well, crazy underrated. They all together probably have one of the best starting fives in the country. And again, I think ACC all together was a little underseeded. Um, Duke, I think, probably should have been on the 3-4 line. I think Miami probably should have been on the 4 line. It's kind of interesting how the Big 12 100% was favored ahead of them, but also the SEC, I think, other than AM, I guess, got pretty good seedings. Let, let, me, let me pitch you guys uh, Colgate against Texas. Yeah. All right. Let me pitch you the champions of the what is that the patriot league yeah i think so yeah <laughs> colgate is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the entire country and texas i was very disappointed to see this colgate team draw texas who has just been playing so well of late like you said earlier cody if they were on in some people's mind they should have been considered for a number one seed especially after how they played in the big 12 tournament but colgate's got two guys who shoot over 45% from three and average at least two and a half threes per game, which is just ridiculous. Um, and with that level of three-point shooting, I feel like you are always going to be putting teams on upset alert. And Texas, as for as well as they've been playing, I personally have just never been able to trust Marcus Carr. I think he's a good player, but he is that type of guy where there are some shots he takes and I just have to blink my eyes. I don't think I'll end up taking 
Texas against Colgate in my bracket, but I will be putting a couple dollars on Colgate's money line before the game starts. I love that. And Colgate, the line right now, it's plus 14, too. So Ooh, I feel like I would, that's I like really yeah. easy money. And also, I mean, a couple of years back, uh, Texas lost as a two seed to Abilene Christian in a wild game. But, I mean, they have the history, too, of going down early as a massive seed. So I don't hate that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Well, that's the shock of smart effect for sure at Texas there when they lost all those first-round games. But yeah. <laughs> I, I will tell you, in one of my brackets, I do have Colgate getting past Texas. Um, so I do, nice. I do like the pick for all the reasons you just said, Aiden. Yeah, I think they're a, a, a trendy, fun pick. And then it's a really fun matchup should they get to, you know, a Penn State where they're just Uh-oh. trying Colgate, to jack Penn up State threes. would be amazing. Holy that cow, would be take- a great matchup. <laughs> Take the over on that if that ever happens. So they'll just be chucking up threes. It'll be insane. Other than that, I just, uh, Cody, since you're taking Kent State over my Hoosiers, I'm going to take Drake over Miami um, <laughs> as an as a upset to look out for. But then other than that, you know, I think Xavier gets through Kennesaw State. I think they're playing well right now. Other than that, I'm pretty fine on upsets here. Awesome. Moving on to Onions. <laughs> onions! Let's pick our Elite Eight teams. Again, this bracket has a lot of good teams, I think. So you go a lot of different directions. We'll throw it over you, Carter. Obviously, you're going to throw IU in here, I would assume. Who, who are you going to pick them up with? Well, okay. So in my IU bracket, I have IU in, okay? Okay. <laughs> but in my in my, in my my somewhat rational bracket that I'm kind of putting as like a, you know, a, for this for this conversation, mm-hmm. um, I do have IU losing in the Sweet 16 to Houston. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I had to put my – put my heart away and put my brain on for a minute. Um, so that's why I do two brackets, got an IU and then one that I think could happen. You know, I got Houston getting in there, getting past Auburn, getting past the Hoosiers in the sweet 16. Uh, but then I got Texas over Iowa state. Actually, I'm kind of riding with the cyclones. Just, I love when people count you out and then you just get yourself back in there. I like the cyclones there, but I do like Texas uh, making it all the way through kind of, kind of just as a f- you to Chris Beard in, in a way, just to say, hey, we we did this all without you. Have fun at Ole Miss. Goodness gracious. Have yeah. down have fun down there in the SEC with Hugh Freeze, people like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've got a, I got Houston and Texas here in the Elite Eight. And um, I think it, it destiny for Houston to get to Houston in the final four, spoiler alert. Good picks, obviously. I think there's a are definitely top two teams in this region altogether. Hey, Aiden, Aiden, what are you thinking? Definitely I have Houston. Um, I think Houston, IU, I'm really penciling that in, that Sweet 16 matchup. I think just with Kelvin Sampson, this just feels like a destiny season. Kind of mm-hmm. been thinking that all season. Got to um, get through Indiana. the Final Four in Houston, getting to play Indiana in, in the Sweet 16. I think that would be a great matchup. Obviously, Sasser's health is just the big question mark right yeah. now. Um, mm-hmm. But assuming he is good to go, hopefully he does hit that first game. I do like Houston coming out of this side. Who they play to get there has been really rough for me to figure out. Um, I fell in love with Xavier for a little bit there, but I think just too inconsistent. This is the one where I, I really do like this Penn State team. It would not surprise oh. me at all if they could take down Texas Let's and go. either Xavier or Iowa State. But this, I think this is definitely the most wide open little subsection of the bracket. Yeah, I'd love that. And um, I would love to see Penn State go deep, honestly. That'd that would be awesome. One of my favorite things if that did happen. So hopefully just put that into existence. Excuse me. But yeah, I, I think we have a lot of variants here in this bracket, which I really love. I'm going to go complete, completely different, and I'm going to pick against Houston. I think Sasser's injury problems is a massive issue. And I could see them losing second round uh, pretty easily without him if he does not play. Uh, but even if he does, I like Miami the next round after that. The Hurricanes, man, I don't know. Something about them that I just cannot pick against them this year. Like, I keep t- you know saying it, you know, Isaiah Wong, Nigel Pack, I think that's the best backcourt in the country. If Nigel Pack gets hot this tournament, watch out for the Hurricanes. Frank, I mean, uh, Larry Nega, he, he's due for a deeper run, too. Every time he has, like, a decent team, I mean, go back to those Shane Larkin teams, I don't know, 10 years ago. They Ooh, never did yeah. too much in the tournament. So I would love to see him uh, get to a final four as well after, our, you know, all these harsh years he's had in the ACC recently. Um, and then I am going to pair them up with Texas. I think this is probably, I mean, one of the deepest and most experienced teams in the tournament. Just so many, tr- you know, grad transfers, Tyrese Hunter from Iowa State, obviously Marcus Carr from uh, Minnesota, even Christian Bishop from uh, Marquette. They a lot of good young guys too. Uh, DeSue has been balling in the Big 12 tournament. 
I think they're just one of the most balanced teams. And you can't, I mean, leave out Sir Jabari Rice as well. Uh, one of the best names in the tournament and also one of the best shooters. So I think they're going to be unbelievably tough to beat. And that's going to be a hell of an Elite Eight matchup. And I'll hold on to my cards. Uh, I think both those teams are good enough, but I won't spoil it yet. Uh, yeah, let's keep it moving along. Dark Horse time. Aiden, obviously, you're, you're thinking Penn State here. Any other uh, teams similar to that you think could make a deep run? Penn State's really the big one that I'm looking at. I guess Drake, just with that their experience level. But like you said, I'm kind of in the same boat where I really like this Miami team all year. Miami is just really, for me, comes down to uh, for the Norchad Omer, who got hurt against Duke. Big guy. Yeah. Yeah, I saw um, there was a graphic going around on Twitter today talking about their on and off splits on defense. When he's off the floor, they just get destroyed defensively which is literally something to worry about if he's not able to play against drake yeah um, so i think drake could make a little bit of noise but penn state is definitely the one i'm dialed in on totally agree uh with drake and penn state and then man if colgate gets through texas watch out because that, oh, that'd be awesome that could be really fun but other than that uh, my real one that i think could make a run is just is iowa state if they're coming together at the right time and figuring it out if you learn how to play without your guy and you do it quick enough, one of your main guys, you do it quick enough, you can become a new team. I think they're trying to figure it out, and I think they're they're going to be okay. So I'll, I'll look out for the Cyclones there. Otzel Parker. 100%. And, uh, I mean, is Miami a sleeper? Not really. I guess five seed going to the Final Four. It's a little bit of an oddity, um, but I'm definitely going to pick it. Past that, I think the winner of Penn State A&M, if they can get past Texas in round two, I think 100% could go very deep. The problem is they're playing Texas in round two, so I don't think it's going to happen. But either of those teams, I think, are, are good enough to go pretty far in, in March. Awesome. Moving to the last part. Definitely not betting advice here. I'll throw a couple picks out to start us off this time. I like Penn State plus 130 against a and I'm kind of surprised they're not favored just because of, you know, Big Ten bias and they are red hot at the moment. And along with that, too, uh, Iowa is at plus 100 currently. I'm going to pound that. Mm, well, <laughs> that 8-9 is extremely dangerous. But I don't know. I think France do for a win. They always go out early in the tournament for some reason. Obviously, that Richmond loss is, is very bad last year. I don't think he'll do it two years in a row in, in Auburn's Garbo. So, yeah, give me Iowa plus 100 as well. But <laughs> Carter, any, uh, any picture of you here? You know, you could talk me into that Iowa just, you know, the anti, cause like they had all the momentum last year going, coming in, winning the Big Ten tournament, and then they drop an egg. Maybe yeah. first round Big Ten exit, they do the opposite. I don't know. You could talk me into it. I would hammer that Colgate uh, spread, uh, I think. I would definitely do that. Then other than that, you know, I would check out whatever that Miami Drake uh, money line is looking like. We'll see what that looks like. But uh, but yeah, for sure, Colgate would be the one I'd be betting on here. Yeah, I believe Miami's at two and a half point favorites right now. So, I mean, if you're betting on Miami to win, you might as well take that at that point. As well. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, I probably will pound that too. <laughs> hey, Aiden, what are you thinking here? I love the Penn State money line. I think that's probably my favorite from this round. And then, like I said, we'll have to be sprinkling a little bit on Colgate to beat Texas. And then definitely I like to spread a lot there. Okay, sweet. Well, let's move on to the last region in the tournament. We finally made it into the West. Personally, I, I think this is probably the toughest region in my eyes. Um, sure. Just a kind of a lot of elite programs. Obviously, started off by the one seed Kansas Jayhawks, who we were talking about a bunch earlier. Um, and then as well with that, I mean, the two seed UCLA, who are a little bit hardened, you know, with that injury loss. But, I mean, this team made the, the final four two years ago, basically with the same squad, minus Johnny Juzang. Um, and then you have Gonzaga as well, who's always a perennial final four favorite, I, I feel like. But let's let's start off in, you know, the fun matchups, the eight, nine. This is a good one. I think Arkansas Razorbacks, muscle man himself against crazy man, Brad Underwood. Oh, man. I just a couple of really good squads too. Arkansas finally is fully healthy with, uh, you know, Nick Smith finally back after basically missing the entire season. And then Ricky Council as well. They have a lot of young talent, I feel like. But Ricky Council really elevates them to the next level. And then Illinois, I mean, they got a good team, a couple of good transfers, Matthew Meyer, Terrence Shannon, Dane Danger is okay. You know, their guards are not the best, I don't think. I would probably favor the Razorbacks in this, uh, you know, conversation a little bit in part because of uh, Muslim's experience in the tournament. I mean, pulling off that massive upset against Gonzaga last year, I think gives them a lot of, you know, momentum and uh, confidence in March. 
And I don't hate their chances the second round if they did make it on too. But Carter, what, what do you think about this A9? Another matchup where I think the coaches could like murder each other if they chose <laughs> yeah. to, uh, if it came to that. You know, I, I'm i kind of digging into, there's two biases going here for me. is the Big Ten bias and the that I hate the way Eric Musselman runs his Arkansas program. I uh, think he's a scumbag. So I'm going with the the, the fighting Illini here over uh, over Arkansas. And I think the secret to this game is Dane Danger. If he's on and they don't really have much that can answer with that, then I would say that'll get them past. It also just depends on if their shooters show up too. And if Matthew Meyer, again, doesn't get caffeine poisoning before the, the big game. So see what goes on there. Yeah, shut up, Matt Meyer. Also, Dane Danger. That's got to be in conversation for one of the best names in the country too. Gotta uh, be. Love that guy. But... Gotta be. Also, my favorite non stat that doesn't matter is that Ricky Council the fourth is Ricky Council the fourth because his brother is Ricky Council the third. What's going on there? Why why is that the why is that how you're naming your kids? Anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's all three they have three Ricky Councils all in one household growing yeah, up. Yeah, they got they got a grandfather as Ricky Council. <laughs> I think dad is Ricky Council the second, and then they're just like, Yeah, I'm, I'm out of names. Ricky. <laughs> you both are Ricky. So there you go. Just lazy. Hey, know what you're thinking. I'm on the must bus here. There's something about short white guys that have <laughs> anger issues that make just great basketball coaches. Short Kings. Musselman, short Kings. Musselman's been the elite eight two years in a row now. Um, yeah. I don't know how deep they're going to make it this year, but just with that backcourt, I mean, Mick Smith and Ricky Council are just, Dirty. I think this is a very good draw for them just because of the guard play. And I, I really do like them here in this first round. Agreed. Awesome. Moving on to the seven ten here. Another fun one. I mean, bringing back the Mountain West finally. I feel like we haven't talked about them in forever with the Boise State Broncos, who it did end up edging in somehow, I guess, to a 10 seed, which is kind of surprising a little bit in hindsight. But and then I think a severely underseeded Northwestern team at the seven. Aiden, what, what do you think about this game? Northwestern, I think I'm I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on Northwestern. Ooh. I feel like they got some big wins over Purdue and IU, obviously. But other than that. I mean, even going down to the last day of the regular season, what was it? If they would have lost their last game, they would have been the nine seed. They won, so they ended up being the two. Yeah. I could definitely see Boise State coming out here, especially because Northwestern's having to travel all the way out west. Boise State, you would assume, would have more of the fan base advantage, especially because, I don't know, I guess Northwestern has a lot of the journalists. But are they really going to be rowdy? How much do journalists really <laughs> get up and screaming during the games? I guess I've kind of dug my heels in and in into the Mountain West this year, but I, I'm going to keep doing that here. And I do like the the Broncos to come out. Oh, man, I'm disappointed. <laughs> the Mountain West, I tell you what, I do like Boise State, though. Um, I think one of the better teams in the conference. And I think this is only the second time that they've ever been in the tournament, I believe. It may be even be their first, but I could be wrong there. But offensively, I think they are super fun to watch. I like Northwestern a lot in this game, though. I think they could go deep, spoiler alert. Boo Booey, Chase Audish, a couple of the best shooters in the country. And it's Chris Collins, you know, crazy defense. I feel like all these Big Ten coaches, other than kind of Painter, yeah, a little bit woody, but they're all just psychopaths. Like they will scream constantly the entire game. And uh, I think that's motivation defensively for some reason. So I, I like the Wildcats in this matchup. Uh, also, you know, <laughs> the Mountain West, excuse my language, but <laughs> yeah, nobody likes that conference. But Carter, what are you thinking? Uh, Charles Barkley loves the Mountain West, so we'll give him that. True. Um, I'll give you a stat. Um, there's only one team in this current field that is undefeated in the first round, and that is the Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah. They are they are one and zero, <laughs> and uh, for that reason, I'm going with Boise State. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I don't believe in the stats. Um, I think it, I I kind of with Aiden just basically on geography. You know, I don't know if the Wildcats can get out there and 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 play in the Mountain West time zone out there. And, I, yeah, I just am pumping the brakes as well on, on, on Northwestern a little bit, although there could be some bias there because I'm just upset with them sweeping Indiana this season. Could be that too. But, you know, I'm going to ride with the Mountain West just for this just for this this one time here against, against the Wildcats. Would love to see the Wildcats go far. I just don't know if the momentum is there. If they are to do it, this is the squad to do it. That's for sure. I love that stat too. Uh, <laughs> they can't break that unbeaten streak. They have to win, I feel like. To keep it Probably, yeah, we'll see. Um, There's no Brian, Brian McIntosh here though for him, so we'll true. see. I think he's there, one of their assistant coaches or something. Oh, so. that's true. I think he is still there. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, that line, it's one and a half too. So, I mean, even, even Vegas, I feel like, doesn't really know which way to go there, but definitely a good matchup. Uh, and then moving on to the last good matchup here, 
the six seeded TCU Horn Frogs matching up against either Nevada, bringing back the Mountain West, or Arizona State. To start off with this uh, first four game, which is obviously the night we are recording as well, I would probably favor Arizona State. I wouldn't be surprised if Nevada won, but just because I think those are probably the worst two teams in the tournament. So it should be a fun game just in that sense. Um, but regardless, whoever does win that, I do like TCU. I think, again, a little bit maybe underseeded with Mike Miles back. They're kind of lucky, I guess, in a sense. They didn't get on the five line because um, I would much rather play Nevada or Arizona State than any of these 12 seeds, maybe other than Drake. But yeah, should I think the game tonight will probably be more interesting than the actual matchup 6-11. Yeah, I, uh, I'm with you. I don't really have much faith in either of those 11 seeds. They're probably the weakest of all the 11 seeds, personally. So yeah, I like the Horn Frogs there uh, as well. Even though, again, ugly basketball court. Sorry. <laughs> True. They're not playing at home. At least. Yeah. Hey, do, do you God. like Nevada tonight? Big Mountain West guy, right? I, I've been on the Mountain West. I can really, <laughs> I really like this Arizona State team. I don't know why. I yeah. feel like I've watched them just at 11, 11.30 at night watching Arizona State on numerous <laughs> occasions. Something about Bobby Hurley. He's like sort of the same thing with Musselman. Just a short white guy that would never shut the hell up. That really just is attractive to me in a head coach. <laughs> I think if Arizona State can get past Nevada tonight, I could see them giving TCU a little bit of trouble. And I feel like you have to pick someone from the first four to win a game. And considering I don't really see Pitt or Mississippi State beating Iowa State, I guess this is where I got to take Arizona State. But if Nevada wins, I'm taking TCU. Nice. <laughs> gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you are right. I feel like one of the first four teams always does win. I, I could see Arizona State winning. I could also see uh, Iowa State losing 100% too, but yeah, that is definitely interesting. Um, awesome. Moving into upset time with this region. Definitely, a, you know, a, a good 5-12 matchup, I think, for sure, with VCU and St. Mary's. I say we throw it right over to the A-10 expert. Aiden, uh, obviously, you've seen VCU play a lot more than, than I believe I have. What do you think about their matchup here? I really, really like VCU right here. I thought VCU really should have been considered for an at-large, regardless of whether they would have lost in the A-10 championship. Yeah. VCU lost a couple games early. I mean, they did. They beat Arizona State in, in Tempe at the beginning of the season without Ace Baldwin. Ace Baldwin, A-10 player of the year. Just yeah. a great all-around player. VCU still plays just that hectic, annoying style of defense where I think for them it really comes down to how the refs call this game. If they're going to be stingy. VCU could definitely get into some trouble. But VCU is going to foul you every single time up and down the court. And they are a very, very complete team. They're playing super well right now. I think if you go on to like Bart Torvik and sort on how teams have been playing for the last like 30 days, VCU is like considered the 11th or 12th best team in the country. I really like how they're playing right now. And it feels like St. Mary's kind of peaked too early this year. And so I do like VCU in this spot. A10 expert can't really disagree with you. Carter, your thoughts on that game and any other upsets? I'm not going to disagree with the 2020 <laughs> national champion Dayton Flyers over there. I, I I like the Rams here too. I think I watched St. Mary's get absolutely throttled by Gonzaga in their championship game, and I lost all my uh, zeal for them. So I'm also going with the Rams here. I like that a lot. And then my other one was just was just Boise State getting past Northwestern is my own on the other one. You know, I think UConn and Gonzaga are forces to be reckoned with in this in this region. So I think that's the only one I see. Does Patino have any chance against UConn? I mean, I think there's a chance. It might be a close game for the first half. And then I think in the second half, UConn might pull away and then Patino will be looking on for the that phone. Same, on the phone with St. John's or somebody. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll see. It'd be yeah. nice to see him win a game. I'd like to see him win a game before he gets there, get some momentum for him. But I don't know if UConn's the, the best draw. Love to see a Hurley matchup in the elite eight. I don't think that's going to happen though, but yeah. yeah. I'd love to see that. <laughs> oh, that would be historic. Um, I definitely like UConn in that matchup too. And weirdly enough, I think I will stick with my original pick of St. Mary's. Um, Go Gales. I don't know. VCU, they didn't impress me in that A-10 championship. I thought Dayton controlled most of that game. And then VCU kind of just got hot late, which is understandable. I mean, probably a little bit nervous with an at-large fit, you know, up for stakes. But yeah, the Gales, if they can shoot it, they'll be fine. The problem is recently they can't hit a shot. So I'm not too sure. Are we going to get the St. Mary's team that, you know, massacred IU by 30 last year? Or are we going to get the one, you know, who can't beat Gonzaga for some reason? 
I'm not too sure, but I'll probably throw some money on the Gales. Past that, I did want to bring up UNC Asheville, UCLA. Um, I think that's an interesting matchup. I think UNC Asheville is severely underrated. I'm surprised oh. they weren't on the 14 seed line. I mean, it is UCLA. I, I do like that team a lot. I do think they'll win, but to point out the spread, it is currently 17 and a half. Um, I'm going to pound the crap out of that. UNC Asheville offensively is, is a super fun team to watch. And um, statistically, they're up there as well with uh, offensive efficiency and all those teams we've been talking about. So watch out for them. If there was a 215, uh, I think, upset this year, I would pick that one, uh, maybe even over Texas Colgate, uh, just because no one's talking about it. And I feel like when that happened, like everyone's sort of assuming UCLA is going to walk into the Elite Eight with this team that they have. But losing Jalen Clark is a massive piece. And uh, yeah. Watch out for Asheville. That's my take. Also, I have to say with this one, when I saw UNC Asheville, mm-hmm. they were a team I have watched one time this year, and I have no <laughs> idea what they've done the last month and a half, but they came to UD Arena in December and got beat by 25 against a, just a bad Dayton team. And as soon as I saw <laughs> them, I crossed them out, and I just put UCLA moving around <laughs> in the next round. So I think it would be awesome for them to win, but that is not on my radar. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't pick up the win, but – I, I missed that Dayton game. That uh, yeah, not a good loss there. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Let's keep moving along. Talking onions. <laughs> Let's talk elite eight teams. I'll actually kick us off here because I think I have an interesting couple of choices here. I'm gonna go with the Kansas Jayhawks. Who, uh, spoiler alert, I have them going even deeper than this. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's gonna be tough to beat them in March, especially if they are healthy. Jalen Wilson. Uh, He's obviously one of the best players in the country, and they kind of just surround him with everything they need. Dewan Harris is kind of the perfect pass for his point guard. Grady Dick, great shooter. K.J. Adams inside is an animal, just crazy athlete. Then Kevin McCullough is kind of a matchup issue. He can shoot it. He can guard anybody. They're not super deep, so if McCullers is hurt or if somebody else gets hurt on that squad, definitely an issue, but I like them going pretty far. And then matched up with them, you know, I think you guys are going to be fighting between Gonzaga and UCLA. I'm actually going to go with the Horned Frogs here. I think TCU is going to make a run. They have Mike Miles back. They look unbelievably good this last month with him. And that's kind of like their final piece. I feel like they have a lot of really good role players around Mike Miles. And um, if he's playing well, honestly, I I don't think anybody else in this region can really match up with them that well. UCLA, I do like them. Gonzaga, heck of a squad again. I mean, Drew Timmy's not going to go out quietly. So it's going to be a lot of interesting games, I think, in this region. But yeah, I'm gonna go with the Horn Frogs. But uh, who who do you guys is, are thinking? Uh, you know, going to an eliteness here. This is, I mean, this is the toughest region in the bracket for me. Yeah. I think there's like five or six teams where realistically, I'm like, I could definitely see them playing in the Elite Eight, and even some of the Cinderella teams. I mean, Boise State, Northwestern. I love VCU, even Arizona State. Like, there are a lot of teams where I'm like, I can talk myself into this. I do like UConn this year. I feel like UConn at times has looked like a top five team. I mean, they were at the end of December, I'm um, beginning of January. It's been a little rocky since then, but I like UConn taking on Gonzaga and I, spoiler, definitely Gonzaga in my final four. I think their offense right now is just unbelievable. Um, pretty much Saint that since that St. Mary's loss in January, they have just been playing so well. And Timmy, we just can never get rid of this guy. I think he is due for just one more last hurrah. And I do like the Bulldogs to make it to the final four again. Um, you can just copy and paste all of that. Cause that's exactly what I have. I've got UConn getting past the Jayhawks. Wow. Which I think UCLA is going to get up to Gonzaga and they're going to, Gonzaga is going to get through them again here. Um, Cause I do think that is when the, uh, the Clark injury does get, uh, a little, a little iffy because I think they can get past, you know, I think they can get past an Asheville and a Boise State without that. But then I think Gonzaga is going to hurt. So, uh, so yeah, I have uh, spoiler alert also Gonzaga in my final four as well. Wow. No Kansas love. I do like the Zags a lot this year. I mean, it just worries me, you know, their conference schedule. I don't know. Like last year, everybody thought they were unbeatable and even Timmy was going crazy in the tournament. But I mean, Memphis gave them a home run and, you know, taken out by, I mean, a decent Arkansas squad, to be fair. I don't know. I kind of like UCLA's chances in that game, honestly, if that is the matchup, just because of that Final Four game, too. I mean, obviously, the iconic Jalen Suggs buzzer beater. I don't think Hawkeyes or or Tiger Campbell is going to forget that anytime soon. So they're going to be coming to that game pretty pretty motivated, I would think. 
Um, but yeah, this is an extremely tough region, I think. So yeah, I, I back it. Moving on to the dark horses. There's a lot of good teams in here. Like we were saying, uh, personally for me, I think one that you guys are maybe counting on a little bit would be Northwestern. I don't hate their odds against UCLA in the second round. I think they kind of match up fairly well against them, both kind of smaller-ish teams with a lot of guard play. And uh, yeah, if if Boo Booey plays well, I think that could go a lot of different ways. But past that too, my other one I wanted to bring up was Arkansas. I think Kansas, especially if McKellar's not playing, kind of similar to Marcus Sasser situation, if they kind of sit him the first game and then he's not fully healthy for the second one, I think Arkansas is unbelievably dangerous right now. And if they catch Kansas at the right time, I think they could take them out pretty easily. Uh, yeah, any other dark horses you guys want to touch on? That's the only one I wanted to say was if Arkansas gets past Illinois, I don't think Illinois can beat Kansas, but I think Arkansas can beat Kansas. Um, so I would look out for Arkansas. And then that's that's really all I got. I think we I talked about VCU already, and I'm sure I'm sure Aiden can speak to VCU more. But yeah, I like uh, I like Arkansas there if they get through. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like I said, I I do really like this VCU team. I think Mike Rose is a hell of a coach, and they are definitely the type of team that is built to win multiple games in March. They have a pretty tough draw, but if they ended up playing Kansas in that Elite Eight or even Arkansas, who once again, if those guards are playing well. And if Kansas is not hitting shots, could easily see Arkansas come out ahead there. I mean, this bracket, there's just there's not a lot of teams in this side of the, in this region that you could talk me out of making a Final Four in Elite Eight. And there's a lot of competitive teams here. Yeah, agreed. Awesome. Moving into the last, definitely not betting advice. I just got a couple first round spreads that I'd like. Obviously, touched on UNC Asheville plus seventeen and a half. I think that's easy money. And then pair that maybe a little little parlay here with Kansas spread against Howard. They're favored currently by I think they're gonna beat the crap out of Howard. So yeah, little little two for one parlay there that I would throw out. I got nothing to go really. The, yeah, we'll the go opposite ahead. direction, Cody. Um really I heard somebody Howard first half plus eleven and a half. Kansas yeah. kind of got shell shocked by Texas. Yeah. Um, I think getting Bill Bill Self back, kind of getting his feet wet. I could see Howard kind of making it a game early, but once again, I would not be surprised if they ended up beating them by 30 points in the second half. But I, I like Howard in the first half against Kansas just to cover an 11 half point spread. And then obviously I've been hyping up VCU plus four and a half against St. Mary's. I like that number a lot. I think that'll be a very tight game. Yeah, I got I got nothing really um, other than uh, to look out for what, what Aiden just said there. I do th- I do think the Bill Self getting, getting back into it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> might take a might take a minute, so you know I I like I like that spread first half that is spread. A, like a deep cut that and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Howard first half spread. I did not expect first half, that out, but yeah, I mean I I kind of back it. Cut. Um, anyways, moving into the final segment of the show, we have to give our final four and national championship predictions. It's gonna be a wild one. This is obviously the hardest thing to predict. So if any, if any of us, excuse me, even come close, uh, everybody should be impressed. But yeah, Carter, why don't you start us off, man? What, what's your final four? So my final four is I've got Creighton getting past Arizona, and I've got Kansas State getting past Duke Ooh. and on the left side of the bracket. And then I've got Houston getting past Texas, and I've got Gonzaga getting past UConn. That's my final four. Then. I just, for some reason, I'm riding with Creighton. I've got them past Kansas State. This is just nice. like my wild pick to get a yeah. to get the six seed in there. And then Chalk on the other side, I think it's destiny for Houston to get to Houston. And then I've got Houston winning it all in Houston. I'm picturing Hakeem Olajuwon in the in the stadium, watching, clapping as the as one shining moment occurs. And that's who I got. I got Houston as the national championship this year. Awesome. And along with that, too, I forgot to mention – we have to hand out a hoopy. It's going to be a, a pick and roll tradition. So who is going to be your most outstanding player from uh, that Houston squad? If uh, if Sasser is back, I think he has a, a brilliant tournament where he like overcomes the injury and actually sh- really shines. But if not, then I think Jamal Sheed has to take a lot of the brunt of the work. So I think if that's the case and they get, make it all the way, I think he I'm giving him my hoopy. Yep, love that. I think he's crazy underrated and definitely will be in contention even if Sasser is there. But awesome. I'll throw it over to the guest. Aiden, uh, give me give us your final four. So I got Alabama coming out of the south. I Like I said, I really like Marquette coming out of the east. 
Ooh. Houston out of the Midwest and Gonzaga come out of the West. We got two one seeds, two and a three. Um, in my national championship, I got Alabama and Houston, two of the top teams in basketball all season. These are the two where I really feel like stood above the rest of college basketball kind of all year. I mean, Houston, you can say what you want about who they play, but they take care of business. They played earlier this year. Alabama beat them by, I think, six. So I would expect a pretty competitive national championship. I'm going back and forth. I think at the end of the day, I'm going to take the storyline. I'm going to take the narrative of Houston, winning in Houston, getting Kelvin Sampson that national championship. And along the same lines, I think Sasser, if he you know, comes back, um, like Carter was saying, he's going to have a big tournament. I tend to believe that the injury is going to be okay enough where he's going to be fine. But once again, I don't know anything. Just looking at that stuff on Twitter, um, mm-hmm. he could end up not playing at all, and they could lose to Iowa in the second round. I do like Houston. I think that's where I've been settled on the last couple of days. I, yeah, definitely a good pick. I think Houston, uh, like you said, they they have that team of destiny in them a little bit, especially with the Final Four location. But uh, who who are you officially going to be handing out your hoopy to there, Aiden? I'm going to go Sasser. I think he comes back. I think he has a big tournament. Just has the experience, right? He just seems like he always knows what to do with the ball. And they just have so many weapons. Um, I see him getting involved a little more as a creator, but he's definitely the type of guard who can carry his team to a national championship. Yeah, definitely good pick. My final four, I am going to be leaving Houston out and replacing them instead with the Miami Hurricanes. Love their pace. Uh, And then join with them another lower seed team. I'm throwing Creighton in the mix too. I think um, Alabama, I mean, obviously they're the favorite. I think that'll be an insane game if that is the Elite Eight matchup. And originally I did have Bama in, but I just don't like them that much. So I'm going to throw the Blue Jays in the final four. Uh, paired up against them in the final four, I got to throw in Purdue. I mean, if this is the year, uh, you know, for Matt Painter to finally make the final four, this would be it. Uh, you could say, you know, it should have been the year last year, and I would agree, but we move. And then lastly, I'm going to go with the Kansas Jayhawks in my final four. I feel like they're just too good not to go back. And – Actually, I'm going to pick them to go to the championship game and match up against Purdue, Edie against Bill Self in the final, and I'm picking the Jayhawks. I can't pick Purdue, obviously, because that's another oh, You got all that way, and then you What took... a tease. Oh, man. Honestly, if we do go to the final game, like we, there's no chance we're winning it with freshman guards on that massive stage. Even if we go to the final four, it's kind of the same thing, I guess, but matched up against Creighton, I like that, just because we, we can kind of shut down Colt Brenner with that. But anyways, yeah, my hoopy, it's actually going to go to Devon Harris Jr. I think uh, Jalen Wilson would be the obvious choice. But if Devon Harris and KJ Adams, if they both average like 15 a game in this tournament, I think basically Kansas is unbeatable. When Devon Harris scores, you know, consistently, they do not lose games. Uh, Even that Texas game, I think KJ Adams had like eight points. Devon Harris had like five. So it's kind of just if those guys are definitely the glue guys to their offense. And uh, yeah. To see Kansas go back to back, I think would be cool. I haven't seen that since Florida in the mid 2000s, and they definitely have a good enough team to get there. That is pretty much the episode. It's been a bit of a long one, so if you're still sticking around, obviously appreciate that. Really, really do want to thank obviously the guests coming on, Aiden Cotter. Hope you had a good time, man. You know, we're definitely sad uh, Dayton's not in the tournament. Hopefully, you know, it made up for a little bit coming on the pod. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, Everybody, make sure you hammered Howard first half plus <laughs> 11 and a half. That is my lock of the weekend. Put the mortgage on it. But uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I had a good time. Of course, man. I'm sure we'll have you back eventually. Carter, any, any final thoughts? You know, we're going into 30 time. I'm super pumped. But yeah, any just general thoughts? Uh, Overly confident, ready to be hurt. So... <laughs> I'm ready to do it. I'm hoping to make some money along the way, and I'm going to text Aiden for some uh, prop bets. Yeah, <laughs> I need more first half uh, spread bets for me. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys listening. This has been Pick and Roll Episode 2. Catch us again after this first weekend, and we'll be doing a weekend summary. But appreciate you know all the all listeners, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. Peace.